Welcome. Welcome, and it's going to get speedy real quick here. I apologize. Until we get up to live time, this is going to be speedy stuff. And my friends, this is game number one in a full best of seven in the Return of the Clans tourney. Once again, I want to say thank you uh, to, to Nova. Thank you to Hugh. Thank you, everyone who's been involved in organizing this tourney. 5K prize pool. It's given a lot of players lots of reasons to play the game right now, strategize, and they've got a really good map pool with it, too. Uh, Gamer Legion, the favorite going into this semifinal, I would say, after beating my team, Los Machos, 3-2. And uh, they're going up against White Wolf Palace, and they are certainly no stranger to these players. And what you're seeing right now is Jordan for Gamer Legion lead the way with the Goths of all civilizations. And he's just shooting down some of the deer here. So this is not the easiest game to... Uh, this is not the easiest start to a series in terms of getting your groove. It's definitely not going to be like that. So quick introductions as Jordan's just going to run home after that trip. Again, Jordan's playing as the Goths here in the blue. All right? In the green. Green, uh, we have Tato. Tato's playing as the Franks. And then in the teal, we have Doubt for Gamer Legion playing as the Poles. Um, in the red over here, we have Lix. Lix is playing as the Byzantines. In the yellow, we have Yo, who will have to have a great performance to have a chance today. Yo is playing as the Magyars. And then here, I think the biggest question mark in this series, and that's going to be Mr. Vivi, uh, a.k.a. the Fat Dragon. He's got some great strategies in mind, I'm sure. And honestly, I can tell you what the strategy is right now. It might seem ridiculous, but I believe he's going to TC drop here with Persians. Check it out. Persians get plus 50 wood. And plus 50 food when they arrive to the next stage. Or sorry, when they start off the game. And you can already see that Vivi's got six on wood. So looking at Vivi's resources, he's saving up wood. Vivi is legitimately going to go for a town center drop here, guys. And I think Gamer Legion know it. I think Jordan sees Persians and he's like, hmm, what's up with this? Maybe even saw the wood line. Sorry, I somehow switched this. Yeah, and look, here come some villagers. I mean, I could be wrong on this, guys. But it very much feels like we're going to have Yo and Lix try and make military and feudal. And then Vivi wants to, to switch things up here. And kind of be the self-sacrifice self for the team. What Vivi's hoping to do. Now, we've got some great quick walling here from Gamer Legion. I have no clue. You're not going to TC drop with three villagers. And now Vivi's like, uh, abort, 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 and is trying to get out of here. This is really messy, though. Like, Jordan's got 10 villagers that aren't doing anything right now. But mind you, this is a start to a semifinal, so not exactly the start Jordan was looking for. And Vivi's going to continue to walk this way. He has no food underneath his TC. Did not make a mill over here yet. So he does have the mill elsewhere. Yeah, Tato expects it. Remember, Persian TCs. This is rather stupid that I have to explain this. It doesn't feel like it's, a, it's an actual strat. But if you haven't seen the Legend of Rubenstock, please watch it. The original Le Legend of Rubenstock, he set the meta on this map with Team Finland. But anyways, the idea is, is to, like, if you shoot someone else's TC down because your TC is stronger, they could have some big problems, and there goes the TC. However, it's only being built with three villagers for now. And now what this does is, Yo's on the way up already, guys. So Yo can go for a super fast uptime. And then, over here, you're going to have Lix probably do something similar. And then they be aggressive and they try and stop Tato before he can cut out. Because on this map, you have no gold until you get to the outer ring. And obviously, if you the, the biggest thing here, too, is if you lose your TC, there's no flat ground over here to build it. You cannot build your TC anywhere but on flat ground. So it becomes a big problem for Tato if he loses this. So Gamer Legion expected something. But it was all through Vivi, and we'll see what happens maybe with Doubt over here. The only save that you can get away with going man-at-arms with is the Poles, because Poles actually get some gold income when they mine stone. So we see that right here for Doubt. And he's going to go for Militia. This is something that Vivi uh, or Lix needs to pay attention to. And I don't think Lix actually saw the Militia. I do not think he saw that. Unsure on if he saw the flag earlier, but I'm going to guess no. And now he sees the militia, so now he should know what's coming. Okay, so Vivi is just full self-sacrifice here, okay? He's going to do whatever he can for his team. Meanwhile, over here, we've got a stable going up for Yo. 
And Yo's got to make sure these villagers don't die, and he is going to do a good job of that. He's making scouts with Magyars. They have incredible scouts, but you do need to get them masked. Doubt will have four men at arms, and it's going to take time for Yo to be able to afford it. And Doubt's unsure on what he should do. He thought about just attacking the stable there, which is the strategy. Seems a little indecisive, but he doesn't have Tato backing him up. I think that's an important thing to point out here. He's got no backup from Tato, and now Tato is just walling himself in here, trying to keep this from getting worse. Now, what I saw in the Legend of Rubenstock upload... Again, it's like three years ago now, you should check it out. Is you see this TC guy, so Vivi, go to Doubt. What would Doubt do if he got TC drop next? Honestly, it's the perfect idea. You don't necessarily have to chase Tato now. You delay Tato, your teammate's fine, your other teammate's fine, hit Doubt. I think that's the proper move here. I think that's what Rubenstock would probably do. But for now, Vivi's just Vil rushing. It looks crazy. As Jordan on the other side, by the way, is going fast castle. He did not even make a lumber camp yet, which is... Oh, no, he did. I'm sorry. I'm blind. He's over here. T90, did you know that goths get loom instantly? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, we have a tower now. I think this tower is honestly here. Yo just signaled this. I think this tower is honestly here because Doubt is worried about a TC coming up. I think they understand. Look how many villagers Vivi has. Still in Dark Age, obviously. He's forever Dark Age. But I think Vivi's just going to drop the TC here anyways. <laughs> I think so. And Doubt sees this. And Doubt's going to try and use this Spearman to block the position. Okay, Doubt needs to get buildings over here. He needs to get buildings over here to block it. And he can't because the scouts are blocking the position. No way. No way. The TC Foundation starts. And what a start to the semifinal. And what a throwback strat here. For the uh, White Wolf Palace players. I Again, I had my questions on how Vivi was going to perform. But if he can just do more things to set up Yo and set up Licks, I think that they could do really well in this semifinal. And now Doubt's going to lose his TC. So you've got Jordan, the Civ with no eco bonus, going fast castle. He's going to be in a position where he has to be aggressive. He did, however, sell his stone. So it doesn't look like he'll have enough stone for a castle, as you can see in the bottom right. And, I mean, Yo's got a bunch of scouts. There's Tato finally making a new TC, but he's only at 22 villagers. Whereas you have Lix and you have Yo with very high vill counts. And now Yo, I think with the proper move, for now he realizes that Lix and Vivi can work together against Doubt. And he's going to send scouts to the outer ring. Now, I would have loved to see him actually go this way too, but he's going the other way and he might catch Jordan at the perfect time. He's also sending two villagers, and the common strategy here is you can have walls behind this. So even if they haven't cut through it, you wall it off so they can never make it out. But then you just have Vivi Vil rushing and Town Center dropping in the middle. Look at this. This is amazing. Vils against towers do not do, do not do too bad. And Doubt's about to be without a TC, so he can never make more villagers. And he's going to be in a really rough position. Similar position to what Tato is in, obviously. And then again, it puts a lot of pressure on Jordan. Who, as of now, I'm not seeing building up towards anything except a few spearmen. I think he's going to try and boom. Now, this is crucial. If White Wolf Palace kill Jordan's villagers before a TC completes, I think they win the game. Honestly, Jordan needs a really good head start with whatever he's going to do here. Now, Vivi might lose villagers, but he can create more villagers. That's the whole point. Vivi's still got food income. So that's, that's the strat. And there goes Jordan. Now, Jordan knows now because he lost one villager what's coming. He can't afford the TC, and now he needs to add some walls. I don't know, though. It feels like... It feels like Yo will attack the Palisades. That's kind of tricky. The villager's still coming over here for Yo. I'm sure Doubt isn't loving life. Like, the other thing is as well is that this is not very fun to play. But no one talked about fun here today. I'm sure Vivi actually enjoys the chaos because it's Vivi. But what we're talking about is we're talking about effective strategy. And is this effective strategy? I believe it could be as you have Yo now deciding to stonewall this. And his scouts just passed Tato. Good job from Tato to build a gate there. And now Doubt, Doubt is going to try and escape next and Yo is going to make his way down here. Now this is interesting. Tato had sent villagers a long time ago, guys. And he actually just walled up Licks. So Licks can't escape. 
Lix is Byzantines. He's been making skirmishers that do not cost very much. They have Byzantines of very cheap trash, which is one of the reasons you pick them. But I think that Yo is going to hear about that. He's probably going to, yeah, he's going to hear about that and he's going to try and help out in what ways he can. And Tato having a sneak villager or two could definitely make a, a big difference here. But Doubt seems dead right now. I mean, okay, Vivi maybe ran in too far here. But if Doubt can't get a new TC up out here, Doubt is kind of dead. He's just going to slowly go down to Skirms. Meanwhile, Vivi's farming. Vivi could take what's left of the berries. Look how many weak villagers Doubt has. And guys, poles do actually get... Uh, their vills actually do regen, which I think is saving Doubt from dying more. They do regen with HP over time. Okay, Yo has a market now, so he should be able to see what's up here. But he hasn't thought about there being another villager, maybe. As he's going double stable on this side. Yo is in the castle age now. Oh, actually, he's about to be in the castle age. And what I forgot to look at now is that you've got Jordan pushing him. So this is actually really good from Jordan because Yo is going to try and go aggressive against Jordan's base. And Jordan's already going aggressive against his base. And remember, there's not going to be any support for Yo beyond just some skirmishers from Lix. But we'll see if maybe Lix has different plans. It's kind of hard to tell right now. Great decision from Lix here. He's going to drop his own tower. And because there's only one villager here, he's just going to shoot this one down. Uh, and then he can eventually chop this tree. Tato is going to try. Yo is going to help out. Now villager's dead. Yeah, Tato is going to try and stop that. But that tree will be chopped down and eventually Lix will be out. But Stonewall's here from Tato have not been spotted. And Jordan going with Pikeman and with Siege is great. But you can tell he reacted here, guys. Because as he reacted there, he was a little late with everything on this side. Now, what's tough for Jordan is, if the Knights start showing up, like, it's tough for both players, actually, because they're looking at two completely different areas. And normally what this does is, as Jordan, oh, almost sniped it there, it does lead to one player making a mistake on either side. I know this is top-level Age of Empires, but still, it does lead to some mistakes from time to time. The O is to be really careful not to walk on those farms, because you can... Sh you can do what we call a crop shot and target the farm. It actually gives you a little more range. I'll explain that if it actually happens here. Tato's trying to boom. And so far, so good, I'd say, for Gamer Legion. Because the scouts from Yo didn't actually kill anything. And neither did the knights from Yo. Here comes that support from Lix. I thought I saw Elite Skirm was coming in, but I must have missed something. And Yo is not booming back here. Tato is not needed right now. Doubt's not needed right now either. So you've kind of just got Jordan right now holding it down for his team, and he's doing okay. Is he vulnerable? Certainly. But he's doing okay as we have a pause here. I hope this is not a bug of some kind. No, it's just a pause. We're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Alex. Hello. He says, a big fan of the videos, though. Welcome, welcome. Someone in chat just said, my live stream, this game is over. This game is over for who? This game is over for who? Vivi is going to hit Feudal Age in a bit. But he's a long way from Castle Age, which is pretty much where you need to be if you want to help your team here. I think this game is very close. And I think a lot depends on what happens uh, when the with the Siege fighting here. Because you've got the Knights going in against... Or Scouts going in against Jordan. Actually, love this from Yo to run deeper. Then he'll definitely get some Vil kills. I don't love to be him being underneath the TC... But I do love how he's run past the TC because there's things to hit in here. And then at the same time, we haven't seen any mistakes yet. Again, we will have the <clears throat> fighting over here as Jordan loses a pikeman. And, but man, Yo and Jordan have done such a really good job here with their booming. Or not with their booming, sorry. I can't find the words this morning. This is going to be a kill for Jordan, and that was really bad for Yo. I jinxed him. I meant to say with their mangoes. Like, the thing is, there's not any knights here. These two stables are a waste right now. And Tato's vil count's gonna look better and better. We have Vivi with two villagers over here for some reason. Lix is out now with his TC. Lix is making cataphracts, though, guys. And guys, Lix also dives in with feudal age skirms. Like, he doesn't even care. Just distracting. And oh my god, what a... What great teamwork. Lix just says, okay, whatever. I don't really need these skirms anyways. Vivi also has Vils over here. It, Vivi's all over the place. But I don't think... I mean, they need to push back against Jordan right now, right? What's going to happen is these cataphracts are going to come over and help. 
all this is going to be cleared. But when you think about Doubt's position, Doubt is, uh, actually, Doubt's still, like, super stuck in Feudal Age. Okay. But, like, Tato. We'll have a 4 TC boom untouched. Tato's vil count's going to be insane. So I think what they're going to need is that they're going to need Yo to start producing from these stables, finally. And hitting Jordan more from this side. Wow, Tato did wall this, make, made his own stable over here. This is something that, as far as I'm aware, White Wolf Palace doesn't know about. And so that could easily lead to, to Yo having problems. We might look back at that sneaky Tato Villager as the difference later on. And Jordan... Okay, if there's any Sif to hold as the Frank player boomed to go up towards Paladin, it would probably be the Goths. I know it's a struggle against Byzantines because these Cataphracts do so well against infantry. But at least your infantry is cheap. And you can just make a lot of them. And that's, I think, what Jordan's going for here. Random tower in the middle, right next to the monument. This this is just for looks, by the way. I think that's kind of funny. And Vivi really wants to go Castle Age, is on the way to Castle Age with the TC that's in the middle of nowhere. As we have more town centers now for Licks, and we have ourselves a relatively close game. I would say, though, Vivi's not in a position to really offer anything with military. But he did set Doubt back pretty badly. And we just saw a signal there from, from Vivi. And, of course, they're communicating over voice. And you're starting to see what is the start of a new push over here. Now, here is my concern for White Wolf Palace, okay? Jordan is going to hear... Or Jordan is going to say to Tato, Dude, I'm getting smashed here. Like, I'm going to start dying to knights and siege and monks soon. Like, this, in about five minutes' time, is going to be a bit of a problem, you'd think, for Jordan. He's going to hear that. And Tato's just going to say, well, hold on. Because he can he can send in so many units from here if he needs to. Or if he wants to, because he's going to have eco over here, he can also stream units into Yo's eco. And there's probably going to be TCs back here for Vivi as well. So it's actually a really good spot for Tato there. Tato not ready to do that yet. He's making a stone gate so these units can't pass through. Jordan, of course, could have big issues with this area of his eco. And you just saw a bunch of spearmen for Tato go down. So now they know. If they didn't already know, now they know. I think they didn't know there were stables. He's going to be knights with uh, full attack because that attack comes in for free. They do not have full armor. And Yo's eco is, is actually on the weaker side here. Now it's going to be Vivi's turn to boom, you'd think, as he makes a tower on Doubt. Doubt, 60 seconds away from Castle Age. Probably not enjoying his first game of the tournament today. Okay, Castle, though. There's no Siege. Castle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Now, Jordan knows there's Knights over here. So what he has done is really smart. What he's done is smart because he can probably get his castle down now. He's got enough pikemen to take out the cataphracts. And the knights can't loop around to contribute here. It's a great job from Jordan. Look at Tato's vil count. 95. It was a good idea from Yo, I think, to drop that castle. But now he's got to decide on somewhere else to place it. I think that somewhere else is going to be close to Tato. But I think Tato is going to have plenty of heads up here. I'm not sure about this castle. I would have preferred a defensive castle if it was needed. But maybe Jordan's telling him, hey, I can stop this one. This is fine. Or maybe the communication wasn't really there. I mean, yes, there's pikemen. Yes, there's a huskarl. But those knights are going to win this fight for now. I think the castle will end eventually go up for Yo. Especially because Yo's got some monks to get conversions. And his knights are at a pretty solid number. A wild game. Vivi a little late to the boom, but Vivi does have Persians, so TCs work faster for Persians. He's going to get way ahead of Doubt. But again, I keep coming back to Tato, and what is Tato going to be able to do to whoever he wants to kill? Tato's economy is looking really strong. And guys, he's going to be sending knights this way right now. He's going to be sending knights this way. Yo's gonna, Yo and Vivi are both going to be hit by this. Now, still going to be awkward because Yo's going to make a TC over here. He could send knights into Tato's eco here, and Tato needs defense, so he's going to drop a very intelligent castle, assuming he completes it. And Doubt's like, all right, guys, have fun. I'm going to boom now, and poles are very good with that, so Doubt kind of in his mode of let's defend. As Tato, nice walls here. He makes the barracks, which he'll probably want anyways. He just needs a house or two on this side, and he's going to keep this out, and yet again, Yo unable to break through. 
and Gamer Legion defending. Lix is imping though? Oh, jeez. Well, you know what? Oh, this is fascinating. Okay, do they have any idea, White Wolf Palace? I don't think... They must know something's up. Okay, they saw this. So they know that Tato can pressure. You're going to see Vivi wall and Yotrine wall now. But if Lix is going to be an imp, guys... Still funny to me how Lix is still helping with Skirmish, by the way. Um, if Lix is imping, he could go... He could do a variety of things. I think what Tata would probably want him to do is focus here. And I know it sounds bad, but the reason Tata would want this is it's so much better than Doubt getting killed and then him getting sandwiched on the other side. That's probably what Tata would want. I think that the, the play for Lix would be to go for a push on Doubt. But I'm seeing this uh, this university now, and they probably want to get rid of this. If they get rid of this, they have so much control over this area of the map. And yeah, Lix is going to... Wow, he's got lots of camels here to counter the knights. He's going to drop his own castle. I think Lix can pretty easily clear this. And then... Uh, okay, he was worried about Tato hitting him, so he's backing up with his castle. Smart. I think Lix can pretty easily clear this and then make a move on to Doubt. We'll see. Now, this is kind of Yo's turn to get his vill count up, but Lix with 117 villagers. Jordan with 108. Having played this map before in similar situations, though, what I'll tell you is you will oftentimes forget about this area. Like, this is 50 farms for Jordan. If anyone's going to be going knights or, or whatever, just get hit Jordan's eco so easily at any point in time. You get so fixated and so focused on the outer resources. And that was probably a drop, would be my guess. That is probably a disconnect. Let me just double check here. So I think, honestly, it's been a really good game. I think it's been very well played by both teams. I don't think any big mistakes have been made. And it looks like they're back in it, guys. I'll answer some of your other questions here in just a second. I think this is the restore. This should mean we're fine. And yes, we are. Perfect. Okay, so there might be a bit of speed as we're catching up because they, they must have, when I stepped away, they must have uh, restarted it. So Tato trying his push over here. He sees the walls now, so he's going to try and treb that down. And then we've got Knight Raiding on Tato by Yo. It's not going to set Tato back too much, but it is something. Meanwhile, we've got Jordan going for a Pikeman and a Ram push against this castle. So Yo just can't be in, he can't defend himself. He can't also micro against Tato and then also defend from Jordan. So Yo is, is, is three different people attacking him right now. But you do have Tato and Tato's going to get cleared up here. I think the big thing to remind you all of though is that Doubt is still able to survive. Like if Doubt was getting pushed right now, this would be huge. It's not the case. Tato has walls here so it's going to be awkward and annoying for Lix to be able to clear this. And I really think Tato sneaking the villager when he did is going to make the difference in this game. Nice shot from Vivi there. He actually converted the petard, which is funny. Vivi's vill count isn't too shabby either. A great job from Yo. Still getting some vill kills on Tato. I'm sure he'll have no complaints about that. But it is only Licks right now for WWP. And it is looking better and better for Gamer Legion in my opinion. That is unless, as it looks like this wall got taken out. This is going to be dealt with soon. But unless Doubt starts to get pressured on this side. Now, I've been talking about polls a lot in recent weeks. Uh, recent months, I should say. And there are going to be people who come back with no T90. Please don't try and encourage it. Listen, polls still need a nerf. I don't think that it is something that is, that is like a radical idea. I don't think we need to change the Civ too much. But polls straight up still need a nerf. So we will pay attention to what Doubt's able to do. That said, great job from Jordan over here. Jordan with ram after ram after ram. Pikeman after pikeman. He will take out this castle. Yo's going to lose a bunch of vills. And Yo's going to have the bottom vill count for his team pretty soon. Not what you would have wanted. Not what you would be expecting if you were WWP with Yo as your pocket position. So I think what needs nerfed is I think the old book needs nerfed. Their farming eco is insane. The fact that they get gold when they mine stone is insane. That's strong. I don't want to touch that. I think that's pretty cool. But I think their unique unit is far too cheap and far too strong with what it does. And I think it's going to be problematic for Licks as he's getting a lead cataphract. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not. 
Because I thought he was just continuing to go with camels. He's actually going to go with elite cataphract. What? Well, if they if they trade well against the cataphracts, then you know pulls need to be nerfed. Simple. All right. Well, what's Vivi going to make as Persians? Normally, what you're going to make is paladins. Vivi's still in Castle Age. No real, no real idea of what he's going to be doing. And Tato does get cleared up, but Tato has 151 villagers. Remember, I talked about the importance of this area for him. Because even if he loses everything here, he still has had so much time and so much comfort at home. Gamer Legion are leading economically now. Gamer Legion are also leading when it comes to the military count. So Gamer Legion are ahead in this game. As Tato's going for Paladin. I think Yo is going to go Cav Archers here, guys. Yes, Yo is making Cav Archers with the Magyars. That's pretty cool, actually. I, I was not expecting that. And I guess it's going to be Paladin for Vivi when he eventually makes it up. And then we're going to see Cataphracts, of course, for Lix. But honestly, as I look at this right now, I think Lix is going to die to doubt. I truly believe so. Now it's going to have too many castles. Old books are too cheap. And then you're going to have Paladins coming in. And I think Gamer Legion, despite all their problems here, have brought this game back and are now in the leading position. I think the score for Lix is really why the team score is so high. But he now loses that castle. He's to fall back to another castle. He does have quite a few of them. We'll see if I'm right what I just said. Meanwhile, walls from Vivi because he's worried, right? He's really concerned. And that's not really going to do much now because Jordan actually researched Onager, guys. So I think Jordan wants to Onager cut through these wood lines to get there faster. Here are the cataphracts. This will be the first time Doubt will see them. And he's going to take the fight and be like, hmm, how, good's my, how good are my old books? No, they're not good. <laughs> yeah, Michael, my only thing with, with the old books is I think that they are far too strong for what they cost. And combined with the fact that you get so many castles with the Civ. So I, that's, that's where I'm at on it. I'm not saying radically change the Civ. I just think the old book is a little too cheap still. Divi getting raided by Halbs here. Remember, it's similar to Jordan, right? They've got a lot of eco in the middle. They've got to protect all the time. But for Vivi, there's no way to protect that. And what's dangerous about get, making Cav Archers here if you're Yo, is that, yes, that's very good against Halbs, but if Jordan ever switches into the Huskarl, which is a huge anti-archer unique unit with Goths, he could spam them all day. That said, this has been a really great game. Now you have the Obux coming in against Camels. The Cataphracts are gone for some reason. Obux are going to shred. And you have Vivi catching up, and it's going to take him forever to get to Paladin. You've got to expect that Tato's going to be in on Paladin in a bit. But here he comes, and we've got two players up against Lix now. And I don't think Lix can hold on his own. It's going to take time for Yo to use these Cav Archers effectively. Meanwhile, Jordan trying to go through. Wait for the Onager. He did research it at some point. I don't know if he has one out right now. But just wait for that Onager. He's going to cut those wood lines. Crazy army numbers over here. Tato is taking a fight before Paladin. So if there was ever a time for Lix to get a high value engagement, this would be it. They had cataphracts and their upgrades and everything. Just so much more expensive than what Doubt needs to do. And, you know, this is still a fight that I think they can comfortably take because they're happy with the reinforcements here. Tato still, though, doesn't have Paladin. He's, he's going to run back here and wait for Paladin. And the Camel's cataphracts holding their own just barely. Now Paladin comes in. We have a castle here for Doubt. Doubt's going to try and take his land back. Vivi's going to lose about 20-some farmers here. This is not going to be great for him. And Jordan continues to be annoying, and now Jordan's got to lead Huskarl. Guys, Gamer Legion are going to have trade corner to corner. They're adding the trade. Their populations are insane for every player that's in, that's in the game. And they're all at full tech. They're all exactly where they want to be right now. You have the Frank player on Paladin. You have the Polish player with tons of castles and Obux. And then you have the Goth player spamming infantry. There are a few upgrades missing here or there. Actually, no, there's no upgrades missing here or there. They're fully upgraded with exactly where they want to be. Yo's still got to get there. He's close, though. I think he did just get full upgrades on his Cav Archers. And here comes Cataphracts to deal with this infantry. It is Vivi, the guy who started it all off with the TC drop. It is Vivi who needs to catch up. And what is this from Tato? Tato in the corner? Just being a pest, man. And guys, you might think, okay, whatever. Vivi can deal with this. Or, or Lix can deal with this. Yeah, 
But here's the deal. This is a problem for their trade. They want to trade to that corner, and Tato holding that for as long as possible is so worth it. Look at all the fortifications Doubt has. There's no way that they're going to easily push this back. So even if the Cataphracts are here, which they are, and the Cav Archers are here, the Gamer Legion will be happy with how much trade they have. They will have a lot of long-term gold income. Military count 151 for Gamer Legion. It is 130 for White Wolf Palace, but the eco is insane. That was 156 vils. It's probably an overboom, but sometimes what you do with Paladin is you just want to consistently have 20 to 30 Paladin in queue, and the rest is all trade. But I think he'll end up deleting villagers at some point. He's got a lot on wood right now. And Cataphract's just simply not in position because they had to defend this, and there was an Onager cut through on this side. So now Jordan's just going to spam Huskarls through. So impressive from Gamer Legion. I'd said before this series started, and I guess people might not have heard me say it in the cast because I, I said it prior to the series starting. I see a 4-1 for Gamer Legion today. Like, honestly, Gamer Legion are playing so good. I mean, they, this was such a rough spot for Doubt, such a rough spot for Tato, and they still made it happen. This is a sign that Gamer Legion is ready. They didn't need any time to warm up. I feel like they're Civ picks made a lot of sense and just some of their decisions in very chaotic moments just were so fitting in this game military count getting a lot more even right now you do have to remember the trade count is going to be nuts for gamer legion great shots from doubt with his bombard cannons as yo is uh is hoping on vivi for support here and here comes vivi and so now vivi's got paladin over here, you've got infantry on the markets. That needs to be dealt with. This castle was dealt with. Look at Tato now. He's adding towers, guys. <laughs> He's such a pest. Tato's gone full licks against licks. He's just trying to be annoying. Sure, it will be dealt with, but it's annoying. And that allows his team to have all this population here. Again, look at the look at the populations. You can see their pop cap. And Jordan's going to be pop cap the second he wants to queue more infantry. I love the... The way Jordan's switching, though. He'll, like, spam units in towards Yo's main eco, and then he'll spam units towards the corner, and he keeps switching back and forth. I love that. And if they really felt like maybe Huskarls were needed on this side, Jordan could walk over here and build some barracks. This is an incredible game. But you look at the trade count, you can kind of see it with what the players have, and there seems to be a pretty big difference there. But the trade count, actually, it's a little higher than I expected. Now that I look at it for WWP, it's just that Lix is down to 87 villagers now, and it's only 100 for Yo and 100 for Vivi. Trebs will be taken out by Tato. He will lose these villagers, though. Unless he somehow quick walls one in, I think he's focused elsewhere. And they were trying to continue their push here. Now, Magyar Cav Archers, some, one of my favorite unit comps. With Reeker, Bo... And all the other upgrades, they have 7 plus 5 attack, plus they have 8 range. Recurve Bow gives you plus 1 attack and plus 1 range. So this is this is the toughest thing for them to stop right now. Not the Cataphracts, but the Cav Archers. The thing is, though, you have Goths. And Goths can counter that because of their high pierce armor Huskarls. And then the other thing is Cav Archers have to be in the same spot at, at the same time. So you've got this Death Ball, sure. But the Death Ball is just holding a position that you kind of had before anyways. Still, they're dealing with Tato's raids, but Tato, he can afford to just make more. And they're now pushing the middle and taking the middle away from White Wolf Palace. The economic situation has not gotten any better for White Wolf Palace. And the position is not getting any better either. Look at Jordan. Jordan says, oh, you walled it up again? That's cute. Well, there's more trees, buddy. Surprise. He's even got a militia in there. What a beast. It stops the wall. He's going to be through to the trade again. Another thing that needs to be dealt with. Another castle that's going to go down. Jordan knows it. He's going to drop his own castle immediately. Here comes Lix with the Cataphracts. And then meanwhile over here, Douch is going to finish this castle anyways, despite the Cav Archers being there. Yo was split up into three different spots in this game. I think he needed to go. If he's going to do anything, maybe go for that boom. Maybe kill Doubt. It's hard to say. We talked about it during the break. But this is, uh, I think, the true... Fight from White Wolf Palace is Tato still got Vils here. Oh my god, dude. At least get Guard Tower. Tell me Frank's get Guard Tower. This is so funny, man. So impressive from Tato. 
I mean, he's had to do everything else, too. To focus on that and also focus on your paladins and your trade is just insane. Yeah, I'm just not seeing the situation change. And Obux are so cheap. Like, look, look at Doubt's resources. Look at Jordan's resources. Remember, Goth Infantry is really cheap, too. I push this castle. This is where all the farmers will go down for licks. Yeah, this game is this game is over. If they kill these farmers, licks drops down to 70 vils. Even though they stopped this from getting out of hand, and it's been impressive from them to delay things, I think this is just a position where if you have the trade, you just continue to send in paladins to the trade route. Tato has 46 trade cards right now. So that is more than enough gold income to be able to make more paladins, even if he doesn't kill a single trade card in this journey. And what it does is White Wolf Palace has to react all the time. I talk about it constantly in Age of Empires 2. Forcing reactions from the opponent. That's what we're going to see here. Is Tato... <laughs> are you seeing this? His two villagers are still there. The castle goes up, though. You'd need to run. Oh, my gosh, Tato. Doubt's going to drop castle, like, number 12, it feels like. Just methodically pushing the side, pushing the middle, pushing the side, pushing the middle. That's Gamer Legion for you. Again, Lix is going to drop down in his Vil count. And what once was 70% outer control for White Wolf Palace has turned into about that right now, maybe more, for Gamer Legion. So well played from Doubt and Tato and Jordan here. And I, I think it's very hard to say that any one player in particular was MVP. I think everyone needed to do needed to play their role well here. They initially walled it out so Jordan wouldn't get TC dropped. Then Tato got TC dropped, and he did an incredible job with his boom. Then Doubt was untouched because of Tato and because of how Jordan were playing. And then Doubt opened up Imperial Age in an insane way. Like, guys, Doubt has 104 Obux queued right now. Yes, he has trade and all that, but can we just talk about that number? And then he has 2,100 Golden Bank. This unit... <laughs> this unit is too good against melee units to be able to keep that many <laughs> of 16 trade cards and he could queue more he just doesn't have the castles <laughs> like he, he doesn't have the castles to queue more than that he's at max Q okay cataphracts going against halbs halbs actually do trade cost effectively against cataphracts if they're fighting with even numbers so that's okay Paladins killing these, uh, killing the trade. This is all Tato wanted when he ran in here. This push continues. It is the first game of the series. White Wolf Palace doesn't want to call it. But I'm not sure what they're seeing right now that makes them think this is actually doable. I think we will see that GG shortly. Uh, Byzantine Walls, good question. So you can play with any of your players if you want. For White Wolf Palace, I think they do have one other player on their team. But I think it is worse than these three. I forget who it is. I think it's Bad Koala, who's a Chinese player. I don't think they'll play with Bad Koala today. I'd be very surprised. Gamer Legion, they have, I think, five or six total members. They could swap in at any time. That is, uh, of course, down to the tournament. Some tournaments don't allow that. This tournament would allow you to, if need be. But why even consider it when you have Jordan and Doubt and Tato playing so well together? That was so good. Uh, Gamer Legion get the first win in the semifinal. It was, I think, a, an entertaining strategy from Vivi. But Yo wasn't able to do enough damage behind it. And I again, I bring it back to this. I think Tato... Again, I'm not saying Tato's the MVP, but I think Tato sneaking the villagers here changed so much because Lick spent so much time focusing on Tato in early imp when he did have potential to roll Doubt with Cataphracts. Right? Like, Doubt's whole forward push here, this all happened because of Tato. And then, of course, Tato backed it up with tons of trade. Tato backed it up with Paladins towards the middle. Of course, you could say all that Tato did was possible because of Jordan, because Jordan was able to hold against Yo. So, very hard to say exactly, but it was a good game. Uh, uh, we don't see all the data, actually, because of the drop, the drop, which sucks. I always forget. I feel like this data is actually accurate. But I think maybe some of this stuff just isn't shown. Um, maybe I've got that wrong, though. Anyways, you can see the trade profits there. You can see the total gold brought in. Tato with lots of wood, which is kind of funny. Wasn't expecting to see that. 
But of course, with wood, you make trade carts. With wood, you make stables. With wood, you make farms, which he had quite a bit of food. GG. All right, so here we are, game two. We will speed up a bit. Doesn't look like we're too far behind, but we're going to catch up to live time in the 3v3 event, Return of the Clans. Welcome to game number two. Um, there's no vil fighting before like three minutes. They can't vil fight each other, but you can see right now, you've got Vivian Tato in the same spot of the map. A lot of tourneys would do what's called an admin restart if the TCs are within range of each other, but they are not within range of each other here. They are next to each other, but not within range of each other, which means this is going to be messy. In fact, this is going to be messy for pretty much everyone because you can see the other TCs are all kind of in the same spot of the screen. This is not the first time that I've seen this in the Return of the Clans Nomad map gen. So I don't know if they need to like take a look at the Vil spawns or what. Might have something to do with how much water is on the map for team games. But holy crap, we have everyone on one part of the screen. So let's do our introductions. Uh, for White Wolf Palace, we have Vivian. Vivi loves Burgundians. Um, he's one of the few players that one-tricked Burgundians for a while. And he, he adds a lot of eco. He likes to drop castles, and he likes to raid with Coustier. He loves the unique unit. Another unit, since we talked balance, that might be a little too strong for what it's worth. Or what, it's, what it costs. Uh, but it's just not really... I would say it's an expected pick, right? It's not super flexible sieve, so I don't think Tata will be surprised to know that a castle could be coming. Um, and then over here, you've got Lix. Lix is playing as the Malian, so he's over to the left-ish, I guess. Uh, Malian's very flexible sieve we'll talk about. And then here you've got Yo. Yo is playing as the Portuguese. Both teams actually have Portuguese, which is really good for Dark Age cartography, so they know what's going on here. And can communicate. Um, can Tato see this? Tato could gate this. This villager could die. I'm so surprised Vivi's trying this. This villager's gonna die. Okay, so I think... <laughs> Did you notice that? Okay, so Vivi de-aggroed the boar. He de-aggroed the boar by building a house right over top of it. The, the animals will get confused if you do that. And Tato kills the villager anyways. Oh my goodness, what a play from Tato. But honestly, I don't want to use the word stupid. So I'm going to use a different word that's a little less harsh. That's just, that's just a silly move. To bring a boar in this way, Tato's always going to block that off. And now you're down a villager, which is rather unnecessary. Great job from Tato, though. You have to give him credit for that. Uh, anyways, looking for Gamer Legion. Well, we know where Tato is. Tato is playing as the Malians. And Tato is uh, near Jordan. Jordan's in the middle here playing as the Portuguese. And then we're going to have Doubt. And Doubt is the probably the safest. He's playing as the Persians. Now, Persians start with plus 50 food, plus 50 wood. Their TCs are stronger. Their TCs work faster. Their docks act also have extra HP. So Persians, a top-tier nomad civilization. We saw them used in game one by White Wolf Palace in a loss. And then Malians, the other reason we have Malians for both is Malians have cheaper wood buildings, which means they can afford a TC, a dock, and a fishing ship, and a house all at the start, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, is this Nomad different from the ranked one? Yes. Uh, no one, no tournament organizer in their right minds, and this is a bit harsh of me, but no tournament organizer in their right minds these days would use the ranked version. Like The ranked version has way less variety. Um, I guess what they wanted to do was they wanted to make it really fair, right? But I personally believe it's you're able to make it fair and add more variety, which is what we did for uh, Wondering Warriors Cup. Like, water is such a important aspect of Nomad, and what they did in Ranked is it's just like a circle. Circle with water around the edge, you don't really have to scout much. Whereas I like this. Like, like Vivi's dock, this is a nice little position for a dock, right? But Vivi is behind. Vivi lost the villager research loom early. Couldn't get a boar. Vivi is behind. And this is not a good position for Vivi if Vivi can't find a boar. Missed out on a boar here. Oh my goodness. Vivi's like... Vivi's like dead. If Vivi doesn't find food from a boar, Vivi's in big trouble. Vivi has no food underneath the TC. Might have been part of the reason why there was so much risk used. There we go. To get that boar before. I'm keeping an eye on it, though, but the Vil Count's not looking good. There will be fishing ships coming out for Vivi, but thankfully for Vivi, Vivi finds his boar. Hopefully, we'll maybe find this one. 
But if Vivi's strategy was to go fast castle, you need a lot to go right here. Another reason why I don't like the Burgundian pick. And we saw kind of saw in game one how White Wolf Palace went for something a little risky. I think we're going to see a lot of that today. I think if it was two years ago, or a year and a, even just a year ago, I think White Wolf Palace comes in here, and I'm saying, like, this will go to six or seven games. But right now, Gamer Legion, man. It's just been all the more... They've been so much more consistent, in my view. But what will Tato do? So, let we do need to talk dock positions as well. Tato's kind of docked the middle. This is important, because someone who docks the middle is going to feel like they're never going to be spotted. So it is possible that Tata won't go for uh, he won't go for water control here, but as he pulls this villager, it does seem like maybe a second dock will come up soon. He's scouting with his fish to see if there's any other fishing ships out here. And Tata heading over this way, maybe to the golds? No, to the food. Okay. Still not sure what he's gonna do. I can see Lix is about to be up though, and Lix is going for a barracks. Lix didn't have any problems. Lots of food underneath the TC. Could easily be scouts if we're seeing the barracks. Lix also with two docks. Man, it's so amazing what you can do with Malians. The fact that he could consider going barracks stable and double dock is just insane. Just insane. Okay, we have Tato going to stone here. And Vivi sees this. But Vivi can't really stop it. So this is going to be some towers from Tato. Vivi is not clicked up yet, so all Tatsu needs to do is wall these villagers on stone. And I guess Vivi, to be honest, Vivi's position is quite bad if he were to get walled in here. He does have stone and does have gold here, though. He walled here, so he must think that there's a crossing, but there's not. This fish could easily be hit. This is a position where you'd want a second dock for more efficient fishing. And you've got Yo over here to protect it, so Yo is probably going water for his team. As the vill fighting continues here. Now we have a barracks from Tato, and he is on that stone. Now Tato hasn't done anything with the stone yet, which is really weird. Like, he hasn't towered the wood line, which would have been the first thing that I did. It's to me like he's he's definitely gone for that dock for efficiency. Am I missing something right now from Tato? Stable. Okay, so he's going to fight a 1v1 against Vivi. He's going to go scouts and towers against Vivi is the plan. He's going to tower here. Another board gets brought in by Vivi. I just... So many players would heavily disagree with Vivi's outlook of trying to get away with a fast castle, a nomad, and going unique unit with a, a unit that costs food. You're either going to lose your fish... Or you're going to get Scout Rush, Tower Rush, or something like that. And oh my goodness. Okay, the Quick Walls. This is crazy. Tato needs to bail here. Tato needs to bail. Even with the Scout, Tato needs to bail. Vivi still has not clicked up to the Feudal Age, by the way. He's in Dark Age right now. <laughs> he can't take wood. Oh my goodness. Can't take wood comfortably, I should say. Over here, we've got Scouts from Lix. And Lix is on top of Jordan. Lix is going to need to have another great game here based on what we're seeing at Vivi's base. And then Yo is going to need to dominate on water. And Jordan trying to wall this up, guys. Jordan losing quite a few villagers to this. Great job from Lix. And Lix will also have a tower here. This could easily be three villagers lost for Jordan. And it is three villagers lost for Jordan. And the tower goes up. So now it's going to be awkward for Jordan to be able to comfortably drop a castle. That's what Jordan wanted to go for. It's very common to see fast castling with units that cost wood and gold, like war wagons from Koreans or the organ guns for Portuguese. Meanwhile, Daldus, uh, Yo is fast castling, excuse me. But he didn't actually compete for water. Could do so, of course. You can see that it is Doubt competing for water for his team. And wouldn't you know it, Doubt is starting to find some fish now. So Doubt should probably clear up the fish from Licks. He didn't actually spot them the first time. He notices this. He'll kill that. And now he's on his way to Yo. Yo with Portuguese probably on stone as well, though. And he is. And this seems like a really good castle spot when he makes it to the next stage. Update over here. We have Vivi getting completely massacred by the scouts. He's still 20 seconds away from hitting the next stage. He'll lose that villager. He'll lose this villager, most likely. 
to lose so many villagers to this, and he's just... He's not going to be able to comfortably fast castle and build a castle. There's just no way. The villager loss early seemed a little risky, and he's just getting destroyed ever since. That said, Doubt about to hit castle agent. He gets hit by Lix. Lix has had an incredible game here. For as bad as it's been for Vivi, it has been great for Lix. But take nothing away from Doubt here, guys, because if Doubt micros this, if he can focus here, he will... Doubt! Doubt! He needs to kill Yo's fishing ships right now. Because Yo didn't go water. Because Yo wants to drop a castle here. And he might even delete his own houses and drop it right on Jordan's face. Yup, yup, yup. There we go. He's going to drop the castle. Now, if Jordan builds a tower right now, he could maybe deny it. He chooses not to try it. And he's bracing himself for the inevitable. Doubt on water. Didn't clear out the fish yet. And actually, this is a really big deal. If Yo is able to hold on water for himself, he's holding on water for Vivi as well, which Vivi very much needs. But okay, Doubt gets the fire ship upgrade. So Doubt will definitely be okay for now. Doubt adding the TC. Has to quick wall now. Great job from Doubt. And see, we'll get a TC down on that gold. Gotta think he is gonna primarily focus on the water right now as Lix doesn't want Jordan to build a castle and Jordan's gonna build one anyways. How's Vivi doing? Dying. Dying badly. The big thing here is Vivi is kind of trapped. Vivi can't go anywhere because of how rough the start is. And we saw how annoying Tata played in the previous game. I guarantee you, look at him. He'll, he'll garrison and re-garrison over and over again. I guarantee you, Tato's not going to want to give up on this one. But this, this becomes very important now. Now, for Yo, he's going to be so upset to see... That he can't pressure past this TC now. Because the castle's there. And then over here, he would have to delete his walls and loop around. So he could maybe hit Tato from the other side. I don't know. It's going to be tricky. Now, I don't like this from Tato. I don't like how he didn't wall in this tower. It feels pretty realistic that Vivi could run out and batter this down and get stone again. But Tato abandoning that area because he wants to tower the wood for Vivi, realizing that's an issue. But why would you leave your tower unwalled? This is a common mistake for high-level Age of Empires players. It is something that happens more than players would probably like to happen. Yo, demo! Boom! Nice demo. I love it. And another one, too. He could get two kills and hit the next one. Yeah, he decides to just hit the next one. Doubt's got to run away now. But Doubt's fine. Doubt's fish boom is good. Doubt can always make more on water. Doubt's three TCs right now. But I have to say... Vivi may be back in it. He doesn't really have wood. He's got 900 gold and 100 food. <laughs> and he can't make... Guys, he can't make a market before he is, makes a mill. So he's got to make a mill first. And then... Oh, it's so messy. Tato will wall this tower in. As we have Imp for Jordan! Jordan going fast Imp! Holy... How can he do that? Wait, Jordan fast Imp? What? Oh, it's because his team has water. Not Didn't spend any food on Vils. He just stopped production. He's been bringing in hundreds and hundreds of food with the fishing ships. Also bought a bunch, as you can see. He's imping in the TC that's currently getting shot down. But if he makes it to imp, he can make a treb. And he can treb down Yo's castle. And then what does Yo do? Yo's not able to boom. Yo's hoping to mass organ guns. And hoping to mass organ guns to kill Dao. It's amazing to me how Gamer Legion constantly are going to have players... In these unique positions where it's like one person starts to struggle and the other one is building up towards something that's going to help them. A great idea from Gamer Legion. Jordan with the fast imp, man. And honestly, okay, Vivi's on the way to Castle Age. He will be able to build a castle. Pato hasn't clicked up yet. Well, this is a hold on. So as Jordan is making trebs to take down Yo. Yo can hold long enough for maybe Lix to drop a castle on Doubt. Maybe. And then Vivi's going to drop a castle on Tato. I mean, this could be really bad for Tato. And it could be really bad for Yo. And it could be really bad for Doubt. But it could also be really bad for Lix, depending on how this plays out. This is really interesting. This is really, really interesting. Like, Tato's probably going to have to delete this TC at some point. I don't see how he ever makes it to the next stage. We're going to see a castle drop right in his face. And I think for Tato, the biggest mistake was 
was trying to hit the wood line here. I think he should have continued to work with his towers on this side. Hmm. Okay, Fatoria for Jordan. 250 stone, 250 gold to make that. That's funny to see. It does take up 20 pop space, but gives you some resources. Here you've got Yo! Oh, this is a mistake from Doubt. Oh no, it's just a great play from Yo. Look at this. Yo with the sneaky dock in the mid. And he's sneaking fires over. And I think Jordan just heard about that. And Doubt's going to chase that down. So, great job from Doubt actually to communicate properly. He's just waiting here to see if Yo will send in anything else. And Yo is waiting as well. There's a castle for Vivi. And what I said earlier is that Tato is not going to be able to do anything with that TC. So, he just deletes it. And I don't know where he's going to build a town. Why did he delete that? Okay, bought wood now. He's going to place the TC somewhere else. Where, though? Here? Okay, here. But he's got to save all of his vills. And then Vivi's going to make his coustier. His favorite unit. Meanwhile, Yo. Yo is has lost his castle. Yo's going to lose his TC, probably. Yo could die. He's making another castle over here. Meanwhile, Doubt... He tried to go for the gate, guys, but oh, no way. Vivi. Or not Vivi, Lix. Lix takes out all the siege. This is so bad for Gamer Legion all of a sudden. Because now here comes Lix. This is what I meant. I couldn't really tell what was going to happen on this side. It felt like Doubt, with all this economy, should be able, with a 30 vil lead, to hold against this. But he wasn't able to, and he didn't have the walls down. It's a big micro mistakes for Doubt. And now he's got a castle coming up on his face, and he's got to deal with this quickly. Meanwhile, the Kustier are going to be out and about. They're going to be all over Jordan, but Jordan's like, I've got Fatorias, bro. Who cares? And then Yo is going imp in this TC, so he's going to be up too. And while that was a good shot there for Doubt, it's not going to stop the castle, I don't think. And so Doubt will have a lot of eco, but... Well, well hold on a second. Hold on. He actually could deny this still. Okay, kills a few vills. We'll lose this. So good from Lix. Kills another vill. Lix will dive. Okay, and now, now that mango's gonna go down. And Lix... I doubt super late with the repairing, honestly. He's probably dealing with other things, but... Oh, great job from Yo here. Man, Yo somehow found his way down to Tato's fish from the other side of the map. Honestly, I feel like that's Doubt's role, and Doubt's got to have that locked. Doubt has so many docks around the shoreline that should have never happened. And yeah, as you can see, he really struggled to keep up with it. I mean, I guess Yo doesn't have as much eco to worry about, because he's at 54 vils. Here's Tato being swarmed by the Acoustier. And I'm, like, trying to think about who's winning right now. It feels like WWP are winning because... We're going to have Yo and Imp soon, and because Vivi's in Castle, whereas Tato's been in Feudal. Plus, it's not like Tato has any help right now. I think what went so wrong for Gamer Legion is not Tato dying, but it's Doubt dying. And Yo performing the way he did on water was so sick. And then this, Doubt had a 30 vil lead against Lix, and Yo has very low eco. I think Doubt should have had military here to defend from this. Remember, it's not like Yo had a lot of organs. He only had five. I think Doubt, uh, you can see it now. He's got like six TCs. He's so caught up in the boom that he can't push and make military. And I think that's where it went wrong for Gamer Legion here. Jordan, I think his push was the correct play here. And now he's going to push in and try and hit Licks from the other side. So, you know what? Let's not speak too soon. Because if he's able to tread down everything Licks has, then Doubt's boom is going to pay off. Jordan with organs and some pikemen right now. That is a lot of knights, though. Pikemen do not have... Oh, actually, they actually have decent upgrades, but there's not enough of them. Jordan has to fall back, but it feels like the next fight might be pretty good for him. You're going to have help from Yo, but it feels weird to go imp to just make organ guns when you can do that in Castle Age. Look at the vision, by the way, for... Uh, for WWP. They can see a lot of stuff over here. You've got Licks booming up on this side. There's the Fatoriates for Yo. But again, does going Imp for Organ Guns make sense? I guess it's just the Fatorias here, right? Good teamwork from Licks. Good teamwork from Yo. Good sniping from Jordan, though. I think Jordan's had better micro here. Look at that. Sniping the Organs, then has the Pikemen for the Knights. I mean... 
Doubt's Vill count's still really high. I'm gonna drop a castle behind this. Jordan continues to push. This is such a close game. And now here come the Coustier. Vivi loves this unit because they, they wreck things. Their first attack is really strong. This is going to be a doubt castle for Jordan. Oh, man. Vivi with the perfect timing. What a great play from the Fat Dragon. This is huge. Because if that castle went up, that would be double the organ production. It won't go up, though. At least not now. Jordan's got 18 villagers. <laughs> He's got 18 bills. So it's quite a commitment to send more over here to finish this, but he will. The Coustier come from behind. Lix is coming from the front. We've got Knights. We've got Coustier. We've now got Orkin Guns. We have three players here for White Wolf Palace, all trying to work against Jordan's push. And I still think Jordan's taken a pretty solid engagement considering the circumstances, but obviously will be upset to take so many losses and not to finish off Lix. Did finish off the TC, and this has now given Doubt time to do something. But what is that something? I have no clue. I'm seriously sitting here just wa waiting to find out what Doubt's going to do. 121 eco. What's the plan? He's not an imp yet. He's not making knights. He must be saving for imp. Yeah, you can see his resources. He is saving for imp. Okay, well, here's the problem. So now, like, Jordan needs to hold... And not die. It's no longer a pushing scenario for Jordan. He needs to hold and not die to Yo. Um, Tato needs to hold and not die to Vivi. And I actually think he's doing a great job. He's got a castle. He's making some monks. He's got some Kibeto. Did these get a change recently? Like, did they change outfits or something? Did they... What did I miss? They look a little different. Now, Vivi's a little... He's a little all in here. Right? Vivi had a big lead over Tato, but suddenly he's only uh, ahead by 7 eco. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Doubt was able to get down here and kill the fish. And Tato still has fish. Not to mention Vivi's entire approach, as we have Coustier rating Doubt, was to all in on those Coustier numbers. Jordan's got Halb. Jordan's going to add another TC. That actually... He might not have had a TC for a while here. Does he have one? Hold on. No, no, no. He didn't have a TC for a while. There's four Fatorias. Or three, excuse me. And he's making what he can. And like... Okay, so what's interesting is... Lix, while he's dying there, is actually booming up on this side. Same with Vivi. He's booming up on that side. So... It's really hard to say, but Lix has probably 60 of his population over here. Not to mention, Yo could lose this castle. Like, it very much feels like White Wolf Palace are going to have to fight from this side pretty soon. Doubt hits the Imperial Age. And what research does he complete? The Feudal Age armor. I come off a little critical of Doubt here in this game. But honestly, if you think back to how Doubt play, uh, how Tato played in the previous game... Jordan played when they were under that heavy pressure. Or when they had the eco lead, which is what Doubt has had. Everything was definitely a little bit sharper. But Doubt, of course, has had to do a lot here. And Yo has definitely gave him a run for his money on water every single time. But you got it. It's a pretty basic thing to have your castle age upgrades at least before you hit him. And now he's researching his castle age upgrades. And Yo is pushing him. Like, he needed those upgrades. Yo's got organs, bomber cannons, and trebs on Doubt's castle. It's Princess Yodit mod. Oh, okay. Good job from Lix to run away. Good job over here, by the way, from Yo to build houses. <laughs> uh, and Dato is trying to make a run for it. And oh, wow, he denied this castle from Vivi. So he knows that they're trying to make their way over here. Wow, this is a crazy game. Yo is continuing his push, though. Doubt finally finishes Cavalier. He finally finishes Castle Age Armor as he's now selling wood to get that armor. Now, imagine if the first thing he clicked in Imp, guys, was that armor upgrade. He wouldn't have had to wait an extra minute. It wouldn't have given Yo time more, more time to mass. But what is nice, though, and Lix is really trying to hold on to buy Yo time, but Jordan is a coming. Jordan is going to be here to help. Lix knows that the longer he holds this position, the better it is for Yo against Doubt. And look at that now. We have a castle there for Yo. So it'll be double castle. Well, I guess kind of triple castle in this area. 
If that goes up... Dow just doesn't have a lot of Cavalier. He doesn't have the support. Well played from Licks to hold. Meanwhile, Tato wants to drop his own castle over here and push Vivi's TC, and he's going to do that. Yo tries to help with an organ. That's a sad song. And yeah, this is just... This is a crazy game. You've got Coustier raids here from Vivi. So Vivi not allowing Tato to rest at all. And meanwhile, Doubt, he sees this. He's not happy about it. And, and look at Lix. Lix shows up with knights. Lix is dying right now. And Lix shows up with knights anyways and snipes the Treb. And Doubt takes an awful engagement. This is so bad. Man, like Gamer Legion hat... They're still okay, right? They're still actually ahead in this game based on populations. But Dowd had so much economy. And I'm so surprised and also so well played from Yo and Licks to be able to pressure the guy like this. He's got 100 vills and, and most of those vills aren't going to be able to work pretty soon. These organ guns, though, they are strong. They are elite. I didn't actually realize they were elite organ guns. So my apologies on that. Whereas you've got Jordan over here with regular organ guns. Hoping to help. A castle here from Vivi. Vivi's like, oh, you're going to focus and drop a castle here? Well, good. I know where your eco is. I'm going to drop a castle here. So he's going to push this down. And it's actually... Yeah, okay. I was going to say, that's a pretty passive castle. He's going to place it even further forward. What an incredible game here. Also, we've got some random halves here. I, I guess Vivi is the only player who right now can't escape. Right? If this becomes... The northeastern side versus the southwestern side. Vivi's like the only one that can't escape right now. If Jordan ends up clearing up Yo with Doubt over here, then they're going to come to Vivi, and then Vivi's going to be stuck. But he's applying so much pressure to Tato that I think it's worth it. And then also, you've got to keep in mind that they've been in this area already for a long time, so there's not going to be as many resources in the long run. Doubt with his Trebs. But once again, not able to take out the castles. And guys, I think White Wolf Palace are going to take this if this continues. But it's so confused by the stats right now. It's just the positioning of the military that's that's good for White Wolf Palace. The positioning of everything that's good for White Wolf Palace. Doubt loses his castle. Doubt will lose another trip. No, no real attempt to even save it there. And Jordan's coming in with his organs. Organ after organ to try and save the day. Still no elite for him. It looks like the Bomber Cannons are making all the difference for Yo. And Doubt, Doubt's about to be down to 30 pop. Like, <laughs> Doubt hasn't saved anything over here. Doubt's going to die. Doubt is going to die. Uh, White Wolf Palace still pressuring Tato. Tato's got castles on both of his TCs. And now you've got Lix. And Lix is on the way to Imp. Now with this TC, he's kept some eco alive over here. But these town centers. And that means he will be able to contribute with military again. Wow, I mean, you talk about White Wolf Palace, you talk about the chaos, not necessarily the that meta that you might see a little more with some of these other high-level players. It's why all the Chinese players are so good on Nomad. They thrive in that chaos. They're playing Nomad team games all the time. We saw Yo. Uh, we saw so many good players in uh, Wondering Warriors Cup. We saw Duity. Random Chinese player just beasted it up in that tourney, but... Uh, for years and years and years, the Chinese teams, including Yo, have always loved their Nomad. And now look at Dao. All these villagers are so pissed that the, their hard work was wasted. They're like, we brought in all those resources in such poor work conditions, and you couldn't even get your upgrades in time. Look, they're even bringing the sheep. Like, oh, yeah, I guess we'll go back to Dark Age. I guess we'll bring the sheep again. They're so upset. They work for free. They're essentially slaves, but they care about their work, all right? They care about their work. They take pride in their work, and they feel like their work was wasted here. But when you're under pressure, guys, when you're when you're when you've got organs on your face, when you've got knights, when you've got mangonels, when you've got pressure, it's very hard to do everything that you need to do. And so I'm sitting here as a caster like, okay, Dow could have done better. Yeah, but he also had so many different things happening. Look at Lix, like, still producing knights out of these stables, finding doubt. Sorry about the lag, by the way. I gotta talk to Capture Rage about that happening. But now, look at the military count. Now look at the eco. I mean, Tato's in a, such a bad position over here. As another castle goes up for Vivi. And 
I mean, I don't want to call it too soon, but I feel like this is very close to GG right now. The only thing... Oh, well, there we go. GG. Yep. The only thing I was going to say is we have to see how Lix deals with this. But Lix is going to have the economy to be able to deal with this. As you can see, he has his Castle Age armor completed. He's going to get his Imp armor, complete Cavalier, swoop in and kill this. Atato's got castles all around him, so his villagers are barely working. Doubt, pretty much dead. What a game. Again, the difference for me, there's two things for Gamer Legion I've got to pick out as what I would consider to be mistakes. I want to say Jordan actually, I think, went for the correct play here. I think Fast Him from Jordan was actually top tier, and the pushback against Yo was so good. And there was always that potential to kill Licks, which they started to do. Tato had Vivi cornered. He had him cornered. He had two towers on Vivi's only stone and only gold. And then he lost one of those towers as it got shot down. The other tower still ranged the stone. And there was still an opportunity for him to tower right next to it to hit the gold and force another tower out of Vivi. Now, Vivi can't make more towers if Vivi can't mine stone. But at the very least, you would force Vivi into buying more stone with that gold, and then you just continue that cycle, and you keep him trapped. You stay here. It, it doesn't look like anything now, but you stay, like, where this outpost was, right here. What he did was, he left the one tower there and said, okay, I denied his stone, and walked over here to build this, and Vivi's like, psh, you're not gonna wall in your towers, bro? And just walked out, took out the tower, then had stone, then had gold, and then eventually had his castle, like, really easily. So, I think that was a mistake from Tato. I really do. I think that Vivi pr still would have probably gotten to his castle, but I don't think it would have been as comfortable. I think that, and I think Doubt not being able to spend his incredible eco when he hit Imp was a big issue. It is clear to me that he just forgot, right? Because he researched the Imp armor, or sorry, the feudal armor when he hit Imp. I think having those armor upgrades already in, having a few more knights, and getting the cavalier before this castle goes up, and if this castle never goes up, it doesn't snowball. It doesn't snowball as much. And then if you take a good engagement against Yo, and it takes Yo a little bit to regroup, what do you do? You bring your Cavalier over here and you help Jordan. And then Lix can't be it here, you know? Like, those were the moments of the game that I felt mattered the most. But even though we're talking about high-level players, there's not perfection. It's just crazy aggression all the time. And Nomad can make you work. Yo! 217 kills, 66 deaths. I think Yo is the MVP there. He beat Doubt on water. When, remember, Doubt opened on water. Yo did not. Remember, he, he had the fire ships. He somehow made it all the way past Doubt. He killed Doubt's fish. He then killed some of Jordan's fish. He then was killing Tato's fish. Look, Tato had to make navy on the back. Like, Yo dominated, or didn't dominate, but he was on three players' fish. He then... Forward castle, Jordan lost his castle, lost his TC, still imped, and then had a pretty sick boom with <laughs> six Vatorias over here. I think his aggression was perfect. I think Yo played really well. That said, Lix and Vivi really fit their role, and I thought Vivi was dead. So what a great comeback there from Vivi. I can so often get frustrated when I watch Vivi because he, he sees the game differently than I might as a caster, and he picks some weird sieves and does some crazy stuff. But... He's Vivi, and he made it work. You could definitely see that the KD didn't look too good for any of the Gamer Legion players, except for maybe Jordan there. All right, so now we will go to one of the home maps for Gamer Legion. And I know Gamer Legion, and I feel like they might play Black Forest, honestly. <laughs> like, I wasn't sure when we played them in the quarterfinals if they were picking Black Forest, because my team is pretty outspoken about the fact that we don't like Black Forest, but... I feel like picking Black Forest is actually good for game religion these days. And uh, Arena is something that I think would suit the Chinese team when that time comes because they love their castle drops. So you probably don't want to go Arena. Huachina is also really good for... And I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, but I think the, the open map, which is their far left choice, would be quite good for them as a whole too. But... I don't know. I just have a feeling it's going to be Black Forest here, if I had to guess. Ah, sick. We got some of it right. So we have Burmese, Poles, and Goths. What? What? 
All right, so a little bit of speeding up, which is, of course, fine here. Welcome, everybody, to game number three. And the teal, uh, well, we should probably do the proper order here, right? So, oh, we've got it. Uh, Jordan's in the teal, playing as the Burmese here for Gamer Legion. This is on their home map, game three. The pocket is Doubt, Doubt in the green, playing as the Khmer. He's going to be going for a very fast castle. In the blue, we have Tato playing as the Italians. Uh, Tato was up against Vivi, Vivi playing as the Burmese. In the yellow, we've got Yo. Yo was playing as the Goths. And then here in the red, we have Poles for Licks. How will this go? I don't know. But I will say this. Doubt's going to go for Fast Castle and a boom here. There's almost no doubt in my mind. Khmer, you do not need to build the prerequisite buildings to go up to the next stage, which means they can pull off a 22-pop Fast Castle. They can go up very quick uh, and then add TCs. So what that does is it leaves either Doubt vulnerable if a castle comes forward, or usually it's going to leave the flanks vulnerable in some way, shape, or form. So what I've seen in the past is I've seen... Uh, so I actually played this Civ matchup myself before. Not the exact Civ matchup, but I've had Doubt's position. And it really sucks because you commit to full boom, and then if your flank gets castle dropped, and then the pocket goes for knights or something, you could, be, you could have big problems. That said, here, we're not going to see knights from Goths. We're most likely going to see a boom, and he's going to hope that this game goes on for a long time. So maybe this could work out. And Doubt's Ultra Greed won't be punished. Obviously, everyone's got stone walls. Um, yeah, I think what we're going to see on Fortress, if that comes later, is probably Kumins, Chinese, and maybe like Mayans or Vietnamese. But for those wondering why Kumins wasn't selected, I think it's probably because Kumins are going to be used... Uh, later on, since Fortress is very similar to it. Hey, thank you, uh, Niall, very much for the new sub. Thanks, guys. Hmm. Okay, so uh, any questions I can answer for you guys right now? This is going to be pretty chill for now. I mean, Poles do have the potential to maybe go for some type of forward themselves. But you've got to think Jordan with Burmese is going to go Fast Castle into his unique unit. I think massing Arambai is better than massing the Obuk early. So I don't like the idea. Okay, this is what Jordan should do. If he senses that this is going to be some type of castle drop from Lix, he should just place a defensive. If he doesn't sense or see anything from Lix forward, he should go offensive. And okay, Lix is going to tower rush. Never mind. I was wondering if we'd see that. They're really close together. So Lix is going to go tower rush here. Now, when you mine stone with poles, you get gold as well. So, for every two stone you bring in, you get one gold. The two-to-one ratio. And then, Polish villagers do heal up uh, every, I think it's 60 seconds or something. So, it's a super annoying civilization to go forward with. And also, feudal age walls on arena only have 900 HP. Those walls do not go up to 1800 HP until you are in castle which means there is potential here for some pressure. Jordan, however, has clicked up rather early here. But it, this is not an uptime you would pull off if you're going to stone. It almost looks like Jordan wants to go Siege Monk in the next stage. I don't think Jordan's going to have the res, honestly. I guess we'll find out. Here comes Lix. I'm actually really annoyed with Lix right now. I mean, not like annoyed, annoyed, like how dare you, but... 20 seconds away from Feudal, and he's not here yet? Like, what's up? Seems like bad timing. Here comes Tato. He's coming forward, and now we have a pause. So Tato's going to pressure uh, Vivi over here. So the Burmese players on both sides are going to get pressured. The next tourney I'm competing in... Um, oof, uh, uh, there's going to be a lot, actually. So I think the next month is going to be quiet-ish. But I'm starting to play... Uh, USA Cup is happening again this year. So I'll be playing in the USA Cup whenever that happens. I, of course, do have some knowledge on things that are going to come. So I will be competing in some things that may or may not happen. <laughs> For the next month, though, uh, I don't know if I'll be competing in much. We just I just played Masters of Socotra and Return of the Clans. Not sure why they paused, but they're hoping they can probably solve a tech issue would be my guess. Why is Burmese, consi Burmese considered a bottom tier 1v1 civ, but top tier arena civ? 
I wouldn't say they're top tier arena civ. I would say they're like they're not a top tier arena team game civ. But in a situation where you can't reuse civilizations over the course of a best of seven, they're a pretty solid spot. That makes sense. So that they're definitely not a top three or top four team game arena civ. They're not. But they're solid enough with what they do that you might want to pick them here and then you can use other civilizations elsewhere. Okay, so here come Vils. And there's the tower. Now, of course, Lix doesn't know this, but Lix is going to hit the berries, which is quite nice. Now they're going to attack the wall and try and break through. Now for Jordan, he might have to adapt his build a little bit. He has to decide on what to do here. He was trying to go fast castle, but he's not quite going to have the resources. Yeah, the next month I'll be training, hopefully, with... Uh... I know Miguel and I are going to be training... But I'm going to continue my improvement series and see how we how well we can do. I'm not doing any of it in preparation for USA Cup. I just I just found out that it was going to be happening soon. But uh, we'll see. I'm hoping the USA Cup doesn't have a potato map pool this year. Because the map pool was just not great last time around. <laughs> but I've given my input and we'll, we'll see. So Tato's going archers and towers. And Vivi's 50 seconds away from Feudal, and honestly, this will be fine for Vivi. This is kind of the, the luck factor with this build order. Uh, well, this is weird, though. Why did they switch position here? I guess because they thought Jordan was going to complete this tower. Also, it's a weird spot. There you go. That's a better stone wall for Jordan. Just adding some walls, still trying to go up. But yeah, imagine if there would have been stone here. Then Vivi wouldn't be able to do anything. But because the stone's in a different position, Vivi's going to hit Feudal. Vivi can drop a tower here or here. And Vivi should be fine. And that's exactly what Vivi will do. Now, Vivi also trying to go fast castle. In this case, he wants to go for a castle drop. In Tato's case... Ooh, this will be interesting, guys. Keep an eye on this. But in Tato's case, he's just trying to delay that. But Jordan is not going to be going for... Oh, no, maybe he will switch now into Arambai. It's a little hard to tell. He could maybe do a mix of other things, too. So you see how this tower is shooting down this tower? And you've got Vils in here? Tato is going to send archers. He's going to try and finish this tower and then send archers inside of this. Which means that he can have his villagers attacking walls... And then also, he doesn't. he's forcing idols out of his opponent, and he won't have idols. Now, I think this is a clear... Someone mentioned this to me yesterday. I think this is a clear sign that Tato uses the range mod. Which a year ago, we never had, and then someone created it. And then I think the devs actually added it, like, into the game settings. But basically, it puts a circle around your towers and your TCs and all that. And even the towers you're going to build. So because of it, Tato is able to build the perfect tower... So his villager can't be ranged. And he's going to eventually, slowly, shoot down both of these towers. So, it's interesting. There, there was a little bit of pushback about the range mod being used and added to our game. Some people were like, well, you've got to use game sense, you know? Like, you shouldn't be able to see a circle. Um, I, I you know, there, again, there wasn't a lot of pushback from it. People were just like, oh, I guess I got to use it now. And this is the... First clear example that I've seen recently where someone has it and they're they're using it well. So, you know, for Vivi, Vivi's not going to have the stone to build a castle because of Tato's pressure. This is really good for Gamer Legion. Not to mention that Jordan is going to be completely fine here. Actually, he might not be completely fine. We'll see. Now, I think what Jordan wanted to do, he's going to be in Castle Age in nice time. I think what he wanted to do here is he wanted to go Siege and Monk. Yeah, I, I wouldn't... I think, like, with a grid mod, right, you could always just count the tiles. So if you think grid mods allowed, like, having the circles around the TC, I guess, is understandable, right? It's kind of assault along the same lines. I'm, uh... I've got that old man mentality. It's like, oh, back in my day, we had to count the tiles. Er, back in my day, we had to walk uphill both ways to place our towers. You know, I've got the... A little bit of the old man mindset, like, don't change my game, but I don't think it's the biggest deal. And I think it's cool because 
It allowed Tato, if you think strategically, it allowed Tato to formulate a game plan here, did it not? Whereas otherwise, he places the tower and he's like, oh, I missed it by a tile. I can't do this. Whoops. Waste. Okay, so there's a monk for Doubt. <laughs> it goes down to the scout from Lix. But Lix is going to come over to Doubt now. Guys, Lix has a lot of forward vills. Like, I think way too many forward vills. So someone asked me if Clown Legion was in this tourney. Um, so Clown Legion was the team that we played first in our group stage. And we, of course, played Arena for their home map game, too. And they had they had poles go for a vill rush like this. And they did a similar thing where they had so many vills out there. Uh, it was a different situation. We had Koomans and Turks and maybe not worth talking about. But let's just say it didn't go too good for the clowns. Doubt's eco ahead, as you would expect. However, Yo is Goths, and Goths are able to spam infantry, which can counter virtually everything out there except for maybe a fully boomed Burmese. And Jordan has just uh, happily shot down that tower. He sees that villager there, kills the vill as well, and could take down these towers, and Jordan's going to boom now. So I prefer Gamer Legion's position. I really do. That said, we'll see how strong the Arambai will be because we will have the Arambai now for Vivi. Arambai only cost wood, only cost gold. Tato, though, will be in Castle Age shortly as well. I guess Lix will be too. So it's fairly even, actually, if you think about it. Now, what do you make as Khmer? What do you open with with Khmer? And also, Jordan. Okay, Jordan with the scout accompanying Doubt over here. It's interesting that Doubt's trying to get relics. I think it's a very Doubt thing to do. But honestly, in team games, it's usually more important to add a fourth TC. It's not like there's Lithuanians out there, so you really need to stop the opponent from getting relics. That's monk number two that Doubt has lost now. I think he could have gone... There's the 4TC a little faster if he skipped the Monastery. But that's a preference thing. I guess Doubt's going to go for Elephants? Meanwhile, we've got Tato over here with his archers. Look at Tato! Look at Tato! Honestly, just so bad for Lix to be out here. I, I don't understand it. Have that many villagers out and about. He was able to save the majority of them. Like, I guess what he's going to do, guys, is he's going to drop a castle and try and go for Knights. He's not going to boom at all. Not sure if I like that move. I will say the red dots are confusing. Sorry if I keep checking them. But if Dal opens elephants, right? Yo is going to open Halb. And then I guess what you need is you need Tato on archers. I think Tato having a lot of archers is key in this game. Because Tato's archers can, can help with the Arambai. But Tato's archers would also help against any Halbs. This might be a forward castle for Lix. If he's got a little support... Might be a forward castle for Lix. And look at Tato. His awareness. He sees the air and by. He says, nope. And he kills one. There was a time where air and by were OP. There was a time where air and by were OP in unique situations. And then there's the time we're in now. And I have not really felt like air and by are that strong these days. A lot of changes were made to them. They don't destroy buildings as quickly. They're just not what they used to be. And uh, I think that's part of why Burmese have kind of fallen out of favor. Instead, you'll see people utilize the infantry and the monks and the eco with Burmese, and that's about it. Look at Tato. Is he about to drop a forward castle and go fast imp? That would be such a clutch play for him. No way, dude. If he gets this up, this is so smart. That's crazy. Forward castle for Lix. Of course, he's just on one TC, adding the second now. Okay, this, I mean, this could be denied if the Arambai were to come back, but I don't think this is ever something that Vivi would expect, and he doesn't see it. Wow, man, this is such a great strat from Tato. It's a little risky. It is a little risky, and I'll explain why, but man, is this smart. And the second they see this, they will know. If you see this, you know, okay, he's fast imping. So the goal here is to have a castle that's in a perfect spot to be able... To drop trebuchets later. And oh boy, oh boy, Tato has to micro. Oh, Vivi saw this. He did regroup with everything, but the crossbows are wrecking the Arambai, as I think everyone probably expected. You need a castle for this unit, and it dies to crossbows. Not the most exciting thing ever. Yes, it's got 12. Oh! Oh my god. Oh my god. This might actually be the play. You need to deny this. 
I think it's worth it if you snipe the Vills and you lose all your air and buy here. For Vivi. That's at 85%. Snipe the Vills. Ooh, jeez. This is a good play from Vivi. Keep in mind, Vivi's got more eco because he's in multiple TCs, but he's going to stay in castle. Okay, Tattoo, you got to run out and finish this castle now with your Vills. Finish it, finish it, finish it. He's not going to finish it. Well played, Vivi. Very well played, Vivi. He took some losses, but he denies the castle. And now Tato's strat. Oh, this is even worse. He can't click up to Imp. Because what you can do is you can build two Imp buildings, so you or Castle Age buildings, like a university, siege workshop, or monastery. Or you can finish one castle. And he had to rush down a monastery. Luckily, he had the university already. But yeah, that castle is probably not going to go up. Vivi's going to wall it in now, which I like. Meanwhile, on this side, we've got 75 villagers for Jordan. 49 for Lix, as Lix is going fast imp. He's making archers? Uh, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I think Poles, you want to be using their eco, right? Like, the Polish eco is so strong. So to go for a low eco approach is weird to me. Tato microing. He wants to have some army when he makes it to Imp, but he is not going to have it. And I'm not liking this either. So we've got two flanks, which are kind of... I don't want to use the word potato, but uh, you're sweet potatoing it right now. This is bad. Okay. And then you've got the two kings. As we have Dal opening with Kondo Tiero? What? Khmer Kondos? Okay, so... It's worth mentioning that Khmer only get Kondo Tiero because it's an Italian team bonus thing. But what we were expecting was opening with inf uh, with uh, elephants from Khmer. And Dowd is going for Kondos instead. Meanwhile, we have Anarchy for Yo. I don't know if Yo has heard about this yet. But he can certainly see it. And Anarchy means you can produce Huskarls out of barracks. I know it's cute, and I know it's exciting to be like, wow, okay, Doubt's using a unique tech. But you don't get squires with this sieve, which means your unit, your infantry units are slow. And then you also don't get the final armor. And yet, Goths don't get the final armor, but Goths get squires, and for Goths, everything's really cheap. So I think the idea here is probably to kill Lix as fast as possible. Like I said, Lix really has had a weird decision here. I don't know why he's opening with ARBs. Anyways, um, but Yo should be in a pretty solid spot to fight whatever Tato's making, but also to fight whatever Doubt is making. I, I would have preferred to see him go Elephant Scorpion. I know it's expensive, but I would have loved to see that. Not to mention that, like, Arambai, Arambai are actually really helpful against infantry, whereas against Elephants, I don't think they're quite as strong. By the way, you can build through the corner pieces. I don't think Tato will do it, but just something to think about. Tato can still complete that castle. That is not fully walled in. Now, what hurt Yo is that he wasn't expecting the condo choice. So, what he opened with was uh, everything for Huskarls, and now he's got to switch into Two-Handed Swordsman. I still think Huskarl, Two-Handed Swordsman, eventually champion, is going to be fine, though. Meanwhile, Tato's over here. Doubt supporting, and that's kind of what they have working for themselves right now, is the level of support they have. Meanwhile, Jordan is adding barracks, and this I like. Jordan's going to go for champion. Burmese get plus one attack on their infantry per age. Um, so that means they'll have crazy champions, which could definitely compete against the Goths. Maybe part of the reason why Lix wanted to go into Arbalest was to combat those champions, as we now have Doubt making Ballista Elephants. Over here, though, Tato pressuring Vivi. Needs some support. There's lots of support from Doubt. You can question the condos if you like, but Doubt is kind of switching away from them now. We've yet to see Yo at fi in final form. As here he comes in with champions. He's got Trebs. He's got a castle. You can tell Doubt doesn't have his units here anymore. But now, like, he doesn't have upgrades that he are needed for his, his units. So he's mainly relying on Jordan's help, and Jordan is here. Meanwhile, these Arambai, they have to hit and run, but they will hit. I think he just needs to run back here and stop. Yeah, because Yo's there. Okay, and then this is where Huskarls are needed. You need 20 Huskarls, and boom, Tata loses his traps. Tata needs to wall in those traps right now. 
And Yo didn't do the same on this side. Yo's needs to be in a lot of different spots right now. But the castle should still fall for doubt if this Streb continues to fire for Lix, and Lix now has another one. Still no champion for Jordan. Here goes Tato with the walls. This is great from Tato. 57 eco, though. He does not have a lot of economy to back all this up. Champion looking, or Arbalest looking pretty good right now. But I'll tell you what, guys. Yo needs to hit 210 pop. You can hit 210 pop with Gots. He needs to get it popped up right now. He's not gotten popped up yet. Doubt's still trying to hold this position with another castle. As he expects to maybe lose the other one here. And now we have a lead Huskarl. As Lix is caught up with Eco. Lix is at 80 some vills. Not bad. He's getting the uh, the Sriracha privilege upgrade, as we call it, because I can't actually pronounce it. And I love Sriracha. And that would mean his knights are cheaper, which obviously could help against the champions, but is it too little? Is it too late? As Jordan has a massive eco, 135 villagers. Yeah, this, this is what Yod needed to address a little earlier, I think. Because Vivi losing these castles puts him in such a rough spot. I think if Vivi could make Trebs, or Yo could make Trebs, obviously Vivi can't because he's in castle, and then this castle would go down. But Tato's buying his team a lot of time to do other things right now. Here comes Yo, though. Three Trebs on a new castle from Doubt, as he really loves the Ballista Elephant idea. And he's now getting double crossbow, which will mean at double bolts firing from these Ballistas. I mean, the condo thing was weird, but maybe it was to open up the opportunity for the Ballista Elephants. I kind of liking it, but I haven't seen a good, I haven't seen like a real good engagement for the ballistas yet. Like Jordan, he's gonna need more barracks. You look at him trying now to get barracks closer to Tata to support him, but he will keep this castle up for now. And again, Vivi's got to be real worried about this. But now in the middle, Doubt's lost one castle. He's about to lose the next. Yo has heard me when I've screamed, "Do not trickle treb over the years." And look how little damage the Ballista Elephants did there. Here come the Huskarls. Now, this is infantry, right? Scorpions should be good against infantry. But Huskarls are no joke, man. These Elephants have tons of HP, but they don't seem to be doing that much damage. As Doubt's Trebs go down, Doubt's going to lose another castle. And he made all of his castles in the middle. So if, if he switched, he went Condos and then said, nah, no more Condos. Now he's going Ballistas and he's going to have to say, oh, I can't make Ballistas anymore. Because he's going to lose his castles. If they weren't pushing Vivi right now on this side, I would say that Gamer Legion were having some big problems. Look at the military count now. You do have Yo close to that pop cap. You've got Yo with full upgrades. He knows what he wants to make. Vivi might die, though. Vivi's probably going to need to continue to make Arambai, which he's doing now. Remember, you've got Tato on low economy. You've got Doubt with a lot of economy, but I think has wasted a lot of gold. And a lot of stone over the last couple moments. Eventually, you might need to trade. And that's another castle down. And they just will continue to push. And, I, man. Like, I think you're scared of going elephants against the Goths. And he just hasn't known what to do. I'm not sure if Ballista Elephants are ever strong enough to go for in this situation. They're certainly tanky, don't get me wrong. They have to kill Vivi quickly, and here comes support from Yo. What's good for Tato here is that he's up against mainly the champions. Now more Huskarls come in. You can see the difference. I actually really like the idea from Vivi to stay on Arambai, and I love his castle spots, because Arambai are going to help out a lot more against the champions than trying to fully tech switch into your own champions right now. Now, now getting armor... That he didn't have before, and he's going to switch into Hussar probably due to a lack of gold. Or at least a lack of long-term gold. That said, army count looking very, very healthy for Gamer Legion. They've had all their players in Imp for a while now. Tato is caught up with Eco, we have to say. I think there's a point soon for Yo. He's got 87 on food. I think there's a point soon where you just delete like 10... Maybe like, yeah, I like the idea of 10 Lumberjacks. So you can have that much more pop out there. I think losing these Trebs will look sloppy, but I think this is still very, very good on this side because you've now got Cavalier. And so Cavalier going to trade effectively against these uh, 
these champions. They're probably like cheaper than champions after the Sriracha upgrade. And then if Jordan ever switches into pointy boys like Halbs, that dies to the champions Yo is making or that dies to the Arbs. So again, the side that really needs to be successful for Gamer Legion is this side here. But now Yo is here with Trebs. And Jordan could deal with that. Jordan needs to get some support there. If it looks like they're going to take that out. Elite Aaron by on the way for Vivi. And guys, Vivi? He has been in some rough spots the last two games. And Vivi has made it happen, man. Look how many Arambai he has. He was fast and pushed, which didn't look great. There goes Doubt bringing in a second Relic. You can see the trade has started for these players. But the Arambai could run right into that trade at any moment. Tato's pop is looking bad. We're now going to see a push against Jordan. Will they actually have the trade in the long run here? Because they're about to get rushed, I think. White Wolf Palace just has so much more military right now. And Dal with his elite ballistas. I'm waiting for them to prove me wrong. He goes in against the Arbs. They're amazing against Arbs. They clear out the Arbs. Great fight for Dal. And now there's infantry. And now there's Arambai here they've got to deal with. Tato really wants to keep this castle up. He's got a petard there? I don't know what's going on there. And hey, wait a second, guys. These ballistas have 115 kills. Imagine if Dal wouldn't have lost his castles. Wow. I really think, like, the idea of making the forward castles just kind of bit out in the butt, but he, they thought they were going to hold this position. He is still making ballistas. And now you've got some Genoese crossbow, and Genoese crossbow is very strong against anything that's Cav. And Vivi has completely bailed in the situation. Maybe he feels like he's needed elsewhere. A little bit of raiding for doubt. I like to see it. I don't like to see 108 villagers, though. That feels a little low. Only 46 on food is a problem. And he is needed over here now. And what I mentioned moments ago is that Jordan would likely switch to Halb against this. And he has done that. It's the correct switch. But with Arbs out there, it will be awkward. That said, there's not that many Arbalest. The thing you're thinking about with Polish Cavalier, though, is how much they cost. There's currently 55 Cavalier on the field. That is a lot of Cav. And it's cheap. Tato has fallen back here. Like, he has been pushed way back. Doubt's Ballistas, I guess, died. He's now in the middle patrolling against the barracks. He's coming over to help. So is Vivi. This is where Vivi is coming with the Arambai. They're pushing Jordan, and they're pushing Jordan hard. Jordan is down to 30 military. The White Wolf Palace are looking so much better now. 175 military versus 90 military. And if the Cavalier get into Jordan's base, he's completely dead. The trade is gone. Everything's gone. And Yo is holding the other side. I think there was a time window here for Gamer Legion. When the Condo Tierra were out. When the four castles were in the middle. But that has been pushed back. And now I'm really struggling to see how they change the course of this game. I think you just wreck TCs right here. Wreck TCs, wreck villagers. Take Jordan's pop down. And then in the meanwhile, you have to start trading. And you can see it now. Yo is starting to do that. And Yo is just going to push this side on his own. I say on his own, Vivi's actually here. Dow shows up with Ballistas to support. Jordan coming in to save his own economy. And they can see the trade is here. Jordan's economy is not going to be too good right now. He's got 26 on food. He's got plenty of idols. His population's actually good. But you'd expect that to change. Meanwhile, Doubt has to save Jordan. So he can't lend any support to Tato. And the way Vivi was able to delay what Tato wanted to do with the Fast Imp was insane. And now Tato's losing his castle. So now he can't even make Genoese crossbow. Of course, a lot of this is also a power of the Goths. We talked about how good the Goths are. Oh gosh, this is... Oh Goth. Um, this is actually a really good job from Jordan to stabilize. Here, Tato has come over with his Genoese crossbow. Okay, okay. But now Tato's going to die, I think. If they had four trebs instead of one here, I think Tato would be near dead. In a few moments. Gamer Legion, though, suddenly have so much more military after they cleared up everything. And we're now waiting to see as Lix is going to lose his trebs. No way, dude. Lix can't be anywhere near this. Guys, Lix needs to bail hard. He needs to mass his cav again. 
And keep an eye on the trade count. I'm actually going to keep that up on the bottom right now because I think that's the most valuable bit of intel. You've got 19 for Jordan. Ooh, actually, like I'm concerned with Yo because he doesn't have 80 military. He's got to delete villagers here. Like again, you need to have like 80, 90 military with Goths, I think. You've got 60 military for Doubt, 70 for Jordan, 95, or sorry, 95 for Jordan and 70 for Tato. There's just more military pop space available right now to Gamer Legion. And they push it right back. And if Jordan could get some siege here, they could push Licks before Yo is able to respond. Again, Yo has got to get rid of pop here. 134 villagers is too much. The trade is good. Delete some vills. Because Goth, what makes Goth strong is how cheap their army is and how fast you can spam it. Spam it, excuse me. That said, the trade count's looking good for him. As we have Cavalier Huskarl show up, and it just was a matter of time until they dealt with this. It's the Genoese crossbow, guys. It's the Genoese crossbow that need to be dealt with here. If the Genoese crossbowmen are out of the picture, Tato can't really make a lot more of them. And then after that, as we see Polish skirmishers... Then after that, the Cavalier could probably do well. Jordan bringing in another group that's going to be rough for those Cavalier. And, and we're seeing the problem with Goths, and we're seeing the problem with Poles. It's just the fact that their units are cheaper, but their units are worse. And there's now more for Gamer Legion. What is this? 220 population. Doubt's got Ballista Elephants on both sides helping. Imagine if he had six castles. Like, if he had six castles with this, oh my god. It was so important for uh, for Yo to take those out earlier. But, I'm just not seeing it. Yo's got 161 eco. He, he's adding trade on top of 131 villagers. He has 40 or 50 pop space to make trade. Or to make army. It's an overboom here. It's tough because 130 villagers is standard for your boom. And then... You don't think about, like, deleting some villagers so you can get more pop space. I guess what's good for him is he's going to lose some pop space when he loses trade here in a second. Yeah, Polish skirms are not very good, but they are at least helping a little against the halves. I like the micro there from Licks to pull out of the fight. Will he be able to make something else? The castles are needed for, uh, for Licks here. And the trade route has been completely blocked off as they had to delete the market so the trade doesn't go that direction anymore. I'm not seeing any trebs. Waiting for the trebs. I have to say, great recovery from from Doubt. I, I know Doubt looked really rough in early in. It kind of looked like he was throwing it for a bit. I, I don't know if you guys agree with that. Some people in my chat were saying that. But he really recovered. And then also, what a freaking amazing game from Jordan. Jordan's got 26 trade, which is the most for his team. He just had 80 military in his base. You could say what a game from everyone, though. Lix has had a great game. You've had Vivi having a great game. I just a lot more question marks over what units are going to be made right now. I think Yo did finally delete some villagers so he can spam more units. And as a whole, Gamer Legion has so much more trade right. Wait, no, they don't. They have less trade. And actually, Goths have come out. Excuse me, I I get confused. Like, some of the stats are mirrored and other stats are not. And I always look here and look here. I look at the TC castle. And Gamer Legion's actually behind with trade. Now, when you're thinking trade, you're thinking anything that's gold, right? So you're thinking uh, Ballista Elephants. That's one of the big things. Ooh, Cavalier into Doubt's Farming Eco. Also, there's trade back here. Nice shot from Licks, because I think the straight-up fights were not working for him. He's going to kill a lot of Jordan's trade here. Needs to uh, needs to fix, get a little patrol here on stand grounds, maybe, so he could effectively kill them, but he's going to kill them. Meanwhile, we have Tato switching into champion with his Genoese crossbow. This ball of Genoese crossbow has been all over the map, 150 kills. They would need siege to deal with this. None of their civilizations really have strong siege. Here come Halbs. Yo. He just can't kill the Ballistas, dude. The Ballistas are so good against Halbs. I think it wasn't necessarily... At the time, I was thinking, I'm not sure about Ballistas. 
I think Ballistas were good. It's just that Doubt wasn't in the position to go for it when he did and lost all those castles. Beyond that, though, Ballistas are great. I think Ballistas are better. Uh, I think Genoese Crossbowman and Bombard Cannon is better than not being able... Look, he's going to make Burmese Skirms. They have the worst... Some of the worst Skirms in the game, excuse me. I don't know if it's actually the worst. Um, but yeah, like Genoese Crossbowmen seem more effective overall than maybe the Aaron by now. And then certainly we have the Halb Champion spam better than the Winged Hussar spam. Certainly. It doubts KD is going to look tasty here. Like this group here of 32 have 99 kills and probably more. Does obviously help when you have a consistent support system in Jordan in front of you. You don't need to worry about taking any hits, but he just helped out with 20 kills there. I think this game... I mean, it's been all over the place, right? But I think this game is over. I think Gamer Legion will win this. It looked like WWP were possibly going to take it when they pushed the middle. But Burmese skirmishers are garbage. You can't go monks in this situation. The Arambai just don't cut it either. There's nothing more you can do if you are Licks. Uh, sorry, Vivi. There's nothing more you can do. And the same with Licks. You tried Cavalier, it didn't work. Even if it's cheap, it's still you still lack the final armor. You're still making Cavalier. And then the Goth player only has like 70 or so pop space for infantry. At this point, he probably needs like 150 pop space for infantry because the units that the enemy's making is just worse. I think they're going to go for one final stand here, one final fight. The amount of trade that White Wolf Palace has is really good, but none of their sieves make really good expensive gold units. Holes are about how little gold they spend. Goths the same. And the Burmese, I guess, the one thing we'd be missing out on would maybe be elephants for them. That is expensive. That is tanky. But even then, Khmer get better elephants. Not battle elephants. They do, but I meant to say better elephants. And then Genoese Crossbow and counter that. And it's like Gamer Legion realized, like, it's almost like they knew with these comps. Because notice, we saw Tato dying with Genoese Crossbowmen and losing castles. We saw Doubt dying with Ballista Elephants and losing castles. But they stuck with it. It's like they had faith that that composition was going to be enough to win them the game. And they got back into it. I mean, to be fair to Doubt, he's got walls up now, so the raids won't happen. He's got castles everywhere. Tato, he doesn't actually have many castles. I'm wondering what's going to be more impressive. Tato's KD or, or Doubt's KD? Probably Doubt's because he's had groups dominating on both sides. But still, this group of Genoese Crossbow, this group of 50 Genoese Crossbow has 200 kills. Which is way more than I think Doubt has. Now I take it back. Doubt's got 180 kills with these Ballistas. What counters Ballista Elephants? Honestly, you forget about trade here, Puppy Saturation. And you go all in with military to continue to push up the middle. That's what you do. Because if this becomes a trade game with these sieves, we know which side is going to win. Because WWP already has more trade. And they're still dying. So I think killing fast. It's like anything that's really strong. It's like Persian elephants. What kills them? Well, you got to hit Persians before they get to them, right? It's so costly. You have to hit them at the time where they don't have 60 of them. And then, you know, also pushing through the middle would mean that the trade wouldn't be a reality, which would mean no more ballistas. But I think I, I have to give full props to Jordan for propping up Doubt and saving him from, from it getting worse, I guess. And as the military count... Wait a second! The military count is actually okay again for WWP? What? <laughs> what? I mean, we do have 52 skirms. The reason Burmese skirms are bad, by the way, is because they lack the final two armor upgrades. But I guess if you have 60 of them, that's okay. I don't know. I still think the position for WWP is rough. Their trade is wide open. It's getting hit now a little bit, too. But it's just... If you look at the defensive outlook from Gamer Legion, as the walls continue here... They are forcing the aggression on either side. They're taking out crucial buildings. I still think that White Wolf Palace would have to have more military to be able to take a good fight. That said, Doubt doesn't have many ballistas. For once. 
He does have mainly Hussars in queue right now. What's better, Polish Hussars or Khmer Hussars here? I actually don't know if, if uh, Lick's got the other unique tech. I think he did. Gives him some trample damage. I mean, I guess Polish Hussars are supposed to be stronger, but anytime I'm making Hussars with a Civ that doesn't get the final armor upgrade, it never feels good. Especially when you're neighboring Burmese. And yeah, they're going to call it. No Ballista Elephants, no problem. WWP realized this game is over. It's a bit funny to me that they're calling the GG now. Because like, you know, now at this stage, the populations are actually closer than what they were uh, five minutes ago. But I think they've, they probably realized five minutes ago, okay, we're, we're dead if we don't push back and they haven't been able to push back. Obviously, their trade's going to get hit, and it will never stop. And Lix, I think, feels like he doesn't know what to do right now. So, moral of the story there is, Ballista Elephant's actually pretty freaking strong. Maybe the condo play was, was to allow them, uh, was to allow Doubt to get into those Ballista Elephants. I'm not too sure. But what a fight, man. What a fight that was. I love Tato's fight. I thought Tato was dead. Like, what a comeback from Gamer Legion. I thought Tato was dead up against the push over here. I thought Doubt was dying, at least in the middle. And there was also a point where I thought Jordan was going to die. But what bothers me is that we never got to see Yo with over 70 military. I say that because he's at 70 now. But we never got to see that. Which is very, very bad, I feel. Because you need to have Goths at like 70, 80, 90 military. But I guess, you know, that team game outlook is let's trade. If this game goes late, we're going to need gold. And maybe it was hard to, to balance that. Like, the KD shows you why Goths need a lot of military. But to have an army high of 96 from Jordan, which has full price champions, and then see an army high of 76 from Yo, it just doesn't feel too good. Even if they're just fighting each other, Burmese win with those numbers, right? Because Burmese have the extra attack. So Yo with 588 kills and 1,300 deaths. Units were just not strong enough. Tato, 2-1 to one KD. Doubt, 850 kills, 516 deaths. Jordan actually had a, an even KD, I guess. But um, the KD was just not very good for WWP. They lose the game there. Gamer Legion goes up to 1. And we will go back to one of White Wolf Palace's home maps next. Um, if you're curious about the eco, you can see the eco is pretty darn strong for Yo. Can you imagine if he had this boom with Khmer? <laughs> like, if he had that boom, look, he's got 7,000 more gold than Doubt, like 20,000 more food than Doubt. Yo's eco was nuts. It's just the units are so weak. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. He did maybe share some of those resources. Very good point from Rafa in my chat. He says, what about Obuk here versus Burmese? Yeah, I would have loved to have seen anything other than Fast and Barbales from Lix. I think up against Italians, it was always going to be tough for Vivi. So I felt he played really well considering the circumstances. I guess that's what Lix was thinking. He was like, he was also against Burmese. So he was thinking, let's go archers. But Italian archers on the other side are like, feels twice as good. And whatever polls are able to do. I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't the matchup they wanted. But again, I think they needed to kill fast. They weren't able to. And that's all she wrote. Whoa, we've got Kumans from Gamer Legion here. Whoa, okay. I was expecting them to save it. All right. Well, folks, here we are. Hey, thankfully, these guys haven't done any substitutions because my scoreboard doesn't change names. This is really nice. Hope you guys are ready for game number four. And uh, we've got some different sieves here, some slightly different sieves, slightly different outlooks. Um, I'll start off with WWP, who probably need this win, I think, to have a chance here in this series. Going down 3-1 against Gamer Legion would be rough. Here you've got Lix. Lix is in the red. Lix is playing as the Britain's flank. Pocket, or middle position, is Yo, playing as the Indians. Indian villagers get a bonus with villagers on shorefish, it is the fastest source of food income in the game. Indian villagers on shorefish. And then the purple, you've got Vivi. Vivi is playing as the Mayans. Now, what I said during the wait, 
We typically see walls and archers on the flanks. It's very possible to go for very fast uptimes because normal villagers on Shorefish is also a very fast source of food income. I love the build order so far from Vivi. This is actually amazing. So he's got a TC on wood and also Shorefish. And then he just gets one villager on wood. Let me change it over so you can see the resources. One villager on wood so we can afford a lumber camp or houses, whatever he needs next. And then the rest go for an insta mill on the shore fish. And it even doubles as, as a mill for berries later. I love that. That's This is the type of TC you want. You can see they've all kind of done a similar thing. Uh, Good start. And I guess up against Licks over here, you've got Doubt. Doubt is playing flank with Mayans. There was a time, guys, and you guys are all way too young as far as Age of Empires is concerned. You guys weren't around in those days. But Doubt literally played Mayans in team game tournaments every single tournament for years. The settings were very different back then. We didn't have as many civs. And Doubt is kind of memed upon now. You know, he's very talkative. You kind of know his personality a bit. Uh, but the, Doubt never spoke to anyone. There was no voice chat. There was no interviews. There was none of that. And always Mayans. So to see Doubt's the Mayans, I'm like, wow, is this 2016 again? <laughs> uh, very far away. Like, super far away is Tato. Um, and Tato's playing as the Cumans. And then very far forward is Jordan. Jordan playing as the Britons. Now, you kind of know where the player positions are going to be based on the colors. And I'm making a video about the things I want improved with Age of Empires 2. And so the way team positions works is your color dictates your spot. And that even applies to this game here. It didn't apply to Nomad earlier, which I like, but it even applies to this. So they got to choose their positions. So they'll know based on the loading screen of the game. Like, oh, we see their colors? Okay, Doubt's going to be flank. Jordan's going to be flank. There's not going to be any big surprises here on who they're up against. They are obviously scouting for TCs, though. They don't have scouts. I think they're probably going to assume some spacing that's similar. Like, they'll assume Jordan's here, Tato's here, and Doubt's over here. I'm not sure what happened. I'd have to look back at the start, but... Well, I, I switched to Gaia point of view. I guess they just sent the villagers forward to build the TC. Could be part of the strategy, maybe. But Tato does have the only sieve that allows you to build two TCs in Feudal. The way, the way it works with team positions is the, it's even and odd colors, right? You have colors 2, 4, 6, and 8 for even, and then 1, 3, 5, and 7 for odd. So the colors on the end of that are on the end of the team. So you've got 1, so that'd be doubt, end of the team, and then you've got 5, highest number on the team. And then you've got Tato, the middle number, middle player. So my... If you guys are curious on my full opinion on it, basically, I like team positions, and team positions is very much needed and good for the game. I just don't think it should be tied to color. Now, you could assume in a 3v3 tournament the positions too, but think if it's 4v4. Think if it's a, a ranked team game. You shouldn't be able to know based on color. A lot of people just don't know that in ranked games it applies. So if you guys are playing ranked games, the colors also dictates position. T90 official, please switch Doubt and Tattoo's colors. Um, too late. I'm not going to do that. But that's another thing, too. It's like, now the colors change based on the previous games, and now there's confusion there, too. So, my opinion, team position should be tied to a separate feature. I'm shocked it hasn't been done in the two and a half years. This new version of the game has come out. So, that's one of my proposals. Make it a separate option. Promote more scouting. You shouldn't be able to just know things without seeing it. And then there shouldn't be as much confusion for you guys watching. So Yo has gone up at a time that is probably going to be scouts here. But it's always a little deceiving with the Indians because they do bring in food pretty quickly. But he hasn't gone to gold yet. So yeah, this does look like a scout play for Yo. He's making a barracks here. And he will follow that up with a stable. For Tato, he's going up. And honestly, it's just an insane uptime from Yo. But Tato is also going to go to scouts. And I think he's going to go scouts into his second TC. But the positions of this have made this very weird. Like, the fact that Jordan's so close to the enemy here is going to make him feel like he's kind of all alone out here. Again, yeah, Indian villagers on Shorefish is the fastest source of food income in the game. It's a very weird, random, unique bonus, but that's the case. 
and Indian villagers are cheaper. So you're spending a little less on making vills and you're bringing in food faster, which is how he was able to do that. Hmm. So it's still fine for Jordan. So he'll probably just add a spear and defend himself. What I think is awkward is that WWP are going to team wall because they're all lined up together. This is very good team walling for WWP. But that's not really possible for Gamer Legion. I do think it's good to have Tato safe at home, though. Like, that aspect is good if he's going to be booming and doesn't want to be pressured. But it also could be bad because he's further away from helping his teammates. So, tricky, tricky stuff, I imagine. Of course, no scout, so you can't deny walls. A lot of people are probably thinking, well... We've got these very fast uptimes, the potential to be aggressive. So why is it that walling is more meta here compared to some other things we've seen? It's because there's no starting scout. So you can't scout the walls, but you also can't stop them with that scout. And here come the scouts for Yo. And I imagine he's very confused right now. He's probably like, guys, did you see anyone with your sheep? Can you signal, please? Can you X? He's like, why did I not see? Look, he went right where I said earlier. Like, why can I not see anything? And now he sees that, so he's like, oh, really? He's probably like, hey, Vivi, are you hungry? Because it's ready to eat Jor It's time to eat Jordan. <laughs> and Jordan! Oh, I love it! I love it! This is creative. He's trying to block this off, but he can't get the wall down on the other side. And yo, oh, he's equal to the task. Equal to the task. And that was a good play from Jordan to try and save his vills. But he will lose one, and now he can't use the mill he just built either. I mean, the start so far so good. We do have Tato, though, with that second TC on the Shorefish. Pretty much walled up soon. But I don't think he'll be taking any damage. As now you've got Jordan! And Jordan was pressuring Yo and killed the Villager. Also could take out the mill. Yo now has to defend from this. Now, guys, I went into today. I want to be... I'm reminding you of what I said. So I either look like a genius or... I'm reminding you how honest I am even if I fail and make myself look bad because I had said earlier today that I really didn't think WWP was as good as Gamer Legion these days. I didn't think they were quite as together. Game, the team game scene right now, there's a lot of question marks. Guys, Yo doesn't have Loom yet. Yo has lost four villagers to this. Yo is just completely potatoed. And now Tato has come over here and he's killed those two scouts, and he's defending Jordan. And meanwhile, we've got pressure from Dell. The start from Yo was so good. He still doesn't have Loom! He didn't research Loom yet! What is happening? It started off so good. Ah, that's such an avoidable mistake. And you've got the pressure still here from Dell, so this is something that Lix is going to have to help with. But Yo went from doing damage, and now he's like, oh crap, I didn't have Loom. I forgot about that upgrade. Yo went from doing damage to taking so much damage. And now you're going to have Doubt running in. And now Lix is in Castle Age, and Lix is like, can I push out yet? He's like, no, you can't do that, actually. Because you've got a bunch of archers running in your base. Look, he's looking for him. Now, this is where it hurts. Because Tato's coming in with scouts as well. And... I don't think Lix realizes, okay, now he does, that it's two groups. Also, Tato, full booming on two TCs. This this is just so bad for WWP. Meanwhile, we had fast castle play, and that's, that's part of the reason why, okay? If you haven't realized already, Gamer Legion had their archer players go feudal age aggro. So Jordan's got to defend now against Vivi, who's in a very good spot with Mayans, one of his favorite civs. But the difference here was we had Feudal Age, Aggro, and Fast Up from Yo. And then we had very passive openings from the flanks for WWP. We kind of had everyone for Gamer Legion go together with good uptimes. But Jordan is not fully walled, and Jordan has not clicked up yet. And there's nothing that really stops Vivi from pushing forward and killing Jordan over the next couple minutes. So this is recoverable, you'd think. As Doubt is trying to hide this army, and he's doing such a great job with it. Yo is now on the way to Castle Age. 29 villagers for him. Good job from Yo, though, to contribute with some scouts. And I'd like to see Vivi, and I'd like to see uh, Lix continue to push forward on their flanks. 
Tato in with support, though. They'll want to keep this army here for as long as possible. You never know what a small army can do later on in the game. Okay, this is not a spot that Jordan is going to love. But he will hear from Tato. Like, Tato's like, listen, Jordan, I'm on the way up right now. We've got a big vill lead over Yo. If you don't die here, we are okay. Now, this is where having Tato far away is actually good. Because that is going to be the next move for Vivi. He's going to go to Tato. And he's going to ask Yo, like, where's Tato? He's going to be like, I don't know. I haven't seen him. No one, <laughs> they have no clue where Tato is. <laughs> That's so funny. Great work here from Doubt and Tato. And this is what I mean. Like, they don't know about this army. So it's Yo and it's Lix talking about it. And they're probably saying now, like, Vivi, we don't see this army. And Vivi's like, well, I don't see anything either. And rip! And Vivi reacts. I'm sure the communication was there. And now Vivi's losing villagers. This is a feudal age army getting value. Great job from Gamer Legion yet again. Again, a situation where you've got feudal age army buying time. You've got Doubt about to hit Castle Age on the right side. You've got Tato about to hit Castle Age in the middle. Yo's situation is honestly so bad. I think he has one option here. And that is to boom. Like, there's no world in which he can go all-in military with 29 vills and do that consistently. So, he is going to try, but he's got to get the TCs down. And guys, this crossbow army was unable to break in. Another reason you might want Kumins, by the way, is Kumins have a team bonus where your palisade walls have more HP. Now, getting thumb ring, getting crossbow, getting bodkin. And as a team, right now, this is dead even. Of course, Yo really far behind. Tato, in a good spot, going to be making knights, most likely. Jordan's position, though, is not so good. Jordan hasn't clicked up. Jordan has had to make towers. And Jordan, he really wants to be the one dictating the pace of the game here. He's got Britons. He'll get extra range in Castle Age, but he hasn't made it there yet. So he needs support. And this is good for Gamer... Uh, not for Gamer Legion. Sorry, for WWP. Indian Camels have a bonus. I love this. They have a bonus against buildings. So they're like, okay, well, we can't necessarily kill his vills. But what we can do is we can take out his ranges, which will allow us to break into his base, but also means he can't make more army. Doubt really needs to do damage now because Doubt is hearing that Jordan is struggling on the other side. And here he comes, and now Yo needs to leave. But Lix was expecting this. And Lix has the Britons, but Britons don't get Thumb Ring. And while they have that extra range, he's going to need to use it here against Doubt. And Doubt is happy to just run in. A great job from Doubt. He's pouncing. He's making sure the Briton range isn't effective here. And while it's good micro from Lix, this is also better situation for Doubt. As meanwhile, Jordan is on the way up and playing Tower Defense. Love this from Doubt. And, and look at Lix. You can tell he's struggling. I'd like to see Doubt maybe consider booming here. He does have the stone. He's going to make more crossbows. He's got 16 army. There's 6 army for Lix. Lix is on 3 TCs, so Lix has more villagers than Doubt. But 3 TCs isn't looking too good if you lose everything to those crossbows. Speaking of losing everything to crossbows, that could be Tato next. Because he's got to brace himself. This is such a good game. And keep an eye on Yo's vill count because Yo is going to catch up big time. Villagers are very, very cheap right now for the Indians. Great job from WWP. Yeah, so back to what I said earlier. I, it's funny. I was about to say I was impressed with WWP and that my early predictions that they would get beat for one here would be wrong because of how good they're playing. And then Yo didn't get Loom and lost six fills. But honestly, I'm really loving WWP's form right now. My biggest question coming into today was actually Vivi. There was this whole thing where Vivi said he was done with AoE 2 just a couple months ago. And then, like, you know, all or most pros do, they end up coming right back. But I wasn't sure how good he'd be. And while you could argue he's had the easiest position because he hasn't been threatened as much, I mean, he has looked really strong here. And alongside Yo as well, as Yo's recovering, it's not bad. And they're using that bonus. They're going to take out the stable. And for Tato, he does, doesn't seem to have enough knights. And more camels come in from Yo, and I think Jordan's going to need to send help. And there he is. He's getting his upgrades. Fortunately for Tato, his stables are cheap with Kumin, so he can always make more. But he doesn't have the lead that he used to have. Yo had plugged this gap from earlier. Tato is here with Doubt, though. Lix is going to have to deal with that. 
Doubt now on three TCs. This is a quality game. I'm loving the pressure from both teams. And okay, now here's where a problem comes in for WWP. So the problem is they can't reinforce this easily. Tato can reinforce pretty easily. Jordan can reinforce pretty easily. So they're making the right choice here, and they're going to run away. Because if they tried to stay here, they would eventually be pounced on. I like that. And I also like the fact that Lix is going up to Imp, but Yo is losing a lot of villagers here. And Tato now on three town centers with still a big lead over Yo. He's going to be closing in 100 villagers faster than you guys might think. Yo really must be frustrated with the fact that Dow keeps breaking through here with Tato. Especially Tato of all people breaking through with an army when they were just at Tato's base. And I think we need to see Imp for Vivi now. Vivi is about to click, I think. Let's see, was he late to the buildings? No, he's got the buildings. Vivi's going to imp as well. So we are going to have the two flanks going up to Imperial Age for WWP. It's something that's very rare to say. Yo is the one who's behind. Yo, Yo is, is kind of dead right now. Um, he does have army to help with. But compared to everyone else, except for maybe Jordan, it doesn't feel like his spot is too good. Now, the thing is here... Like, Doubt's going to lose an army, okay? Lix is not losing army right now. And he's also not losing villagers. So he's got range right now over Doubt. He's going to have additional range over Doubt in the long term. And while Doubt still has plenty more crossbows, when you have 10 or 11 range Arbalest against your crossbows, you're just stuck in Doubt's position. So he needs to go up to the Imperial Age as well. Also over here, Jordan has the range right now. But the Mayan player will be able to equal that range with Arbalest, and then this could be problematic for Jordan. So I think this is going to be a situation where the flanks start to struggle for Gamer Legion. But Tato could save the day because now Tato's on the way to Imp. The ebb and flow of Age of Empires 2 is incredible. People ask me, T90, how can you not get bored with this game? It's because it's, it's, it's the best game ever, okay? The best game ever. I don't care about any recency hype. I don't care about any graphics. I don't care about any of that crap. This game is incredible. And our, these players are really showing that. Now, where this gets dangerous, I think, is if Yo can supply enough of a camel buffer with arbs. I don't know if Tato can ever make enough cavalier, which is what he's shooting for. I don't think he can ever make enough cavalier to deal with that massive ball of arb camel. And so this is... I, I really hope they go to Tato now. Because if they go to Tato, I think they win the game. If they go to Jordan, Jordan's kind of already out of it. So it doesn't matter as much. But if they run directly to Tato, and that's what they're doing, they will not give Tato the time to get the numbers, which is really their only way. I don't even know if it would work. Now, the other thing is Arbs and Camels can shred the town centers. So these forward town centers for Tato, he won't even complete this one. Or never mind. Yes, he will. But these TCs are going to go down. And ah! Hello! Vivi! Free night kills. Yep, he sees it. And Tata runs away. Doubt on this side, he can't fight. He's got to wait for Arp, right? So they, they know that. They know Jordan can't fight. They know Tato can't fight. Jordan has fallen back to save his teammate. Tata will lose that TC. But I think the most important thing they need to engage against is actually the army. They need to take out all the crossbow and all the knights if they can. But obviously, if you don't see anything, you can just take out the crossbows. That's fine. Tato might be having some gold control problems if he built those TCs. It looks like he's got gold for now. But now he has to wait. And he has to be very choosy on where he researches the Cavalier upgrade. Because you don't want to research it in any of these forward stables. It'll go down really quickly. He's researching it in this stable. I mean, this just shows how bad the situation is. And right now, WWP are like, oh, okay, you're going to wait for your upgrades? Cool. Enjoy it as I kill all of your economy. I mean, they just sent everything here. And now you've got Vivi coming forward with the forward castle. Vivi, man, 100 vils, 60 army. Great game sense there. Tato still 15 seconds away from the final armor upgrade. Here comes Doubt to save him. And Tato's vil lead is gone. Keep in mind, though, that Tato is in. This is still a, a game that Gamer Legion could maybe bring back as long as Doubt doesn't die to Lix because Doubt had to come save Tato. Jordan, of course, needs to survive against Vivi, which seems like the toughest task of them all. Jordan 
Well, he's here to support. Cavalier will complete for Tato, which is a positive. Army count looking pretty even, but better for White Wolf Palace for the time being. That said, it looks like all of this army is going to go down for WWP. All this army is going to go down for WWP. Now we have to think about what's coming next. As Gamer Legion is now behind an eco as a whole. But we have Jordan up to the Imperial Age. He needs to keep his stuff alive. And maybe there's a chance that with Tato and Doubt together, they could bring this back. Doubt's got 77 Arbalest. Mayan Arbs are so freakishly cheap. He is behind an economy, if you compare that to the economy of Vivi on the other side. But with those numbers, he could definitely push the Britons. I still worry about Jordan's longevity. I, I'm not seeing high enough army numbers from him. I'm not seeing good enough eco for him. But then again, I'm worried about Yo, too, because Yo is two and a half minutes away from the Imperial Age. So, I mean, he can go full camel, though. That's the problem. He can go full camel with upgrades, so they need to really fight over the next two minutes. If Gamer Legion have a chance here, they need to mop up armies over the next two minutes. And there was a big fight here for Doubt. Doubt can deny this castle, and then... Doubt. He could deny this castle, and then he can take the Vil lead over Lix. We know he's got the army lead already. And that's not getting any better. Here could, here's an army from Jordan and an army from Doubt up against Vivi. Vivi was trying to hit Tato again. And maybe there's a world where Gamer Legion can do this. Now, Jordan's losing all of his TCs. He's losing all of his villagers. It feels like Vivi can always make arb numbers that's similar to what Doubt has made. But still a minute until Yo can get involved. Yo with 31 military, but he hasn't been able to bring it here yet. Here, though, is Tato's Cavalier. It really hurts Tato that he doesn't have more than just 27. Yo will be happy to take this engagement, I think, but he'll want to wait for the upgrades normally. This is the best case scenario fight for Jordan and Tato. I don't think it's a great fight for Yo to be taking. He should just back up. Back up to his buddy. Great recovery here from Lix. Lix should probably complete this castle just in case he's making another castle back here. I like that too. I like the uh, the dodging there for Lix. Doubt was actually focus firing, but you can see Lix dodging the shots. This is so good. Doubt's missing so many volleys, but Doubt's focusing on the new army. He's focusing on a forward castle. He's going to focus on Trebs too. And whoa, 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 whoa. Talk about putting the cart before the horse. What the? Dude. Yo got a little crazy with that one. And that hurts to lose those villagers, too, because you really want them for more for more uh, buildings, probably. I mean, Jordan can't even afford Arb right away. He's just getting Bracer. There's just a random line. Or not a random line. Sorry, there's a, there's a purple line running right through his eco at all times. And I think this castle will complete. Paladin is 70 seconds away for Tato. Heavy Camel is 30 seconds away for Yo. And this is just, this is just disastrous for Tato and Jordan. Jordan will lose all of his army. Tato will lose all of his army. The castle will complete. And now they're probably telling Doubt, hey, buddy, uh, can you support us in any way? Because uh, if you can't, I think we're going to have some problems here. Also, Yo's resources are insane. Yo is going to click Imp Camel right away. So it gets worse. And I don't think Tato has gold control to really be able to make many Paladins. This semifinal has been incredible. What a recovery from WWP. This looked so bad for Yo. And now Yo has the Vil count. Or the Vil lead. Like, what? That's nuts. Again, take the fight before Imp Camel now. There's all these time windows. They have to kill. Like, Doubt is to kill Lix before Imp Camel comes in. Tato has to take good fights against Yo before Imp Camel comes in. Doubt's actually doing it, which is the crazy thing. Doubt is actually pushing Lix. Both the castles here, and then also the TCs and the ranges here. But you've got to think Yo is going to group up. And yeah, Yo is going to go in and he's going to start to clear some of this. Because they're, do they're dominating Tato. And yeah, here you have it. Tato's TC is going to repair it, which is good. Yo just told Vivi, hey, uh, make sure your arbs are firing on the units, please. And that is exactly what's happening. Imp Camel comes in for the remaining camels. I still think that's a very good fight for Vivi and for Yo, even if they lose everything. 
Because over here, you've got the Imp Camels. They see the Imp Camel. They call the GG. They know that Tato's position is bad, but Jordan's position is worse. And Dow was about to lose as well. In 2018, guys, I was like the biggest Vivi fanboy, particularly in 1v1s. Because his style was just so... It, it was so wild and predictable in, at times, but it was so fun to watch. And like I said, a few months ago, he came out and said he was... It was like right before AB4, he's like, I think he put too much pressure on himself in AB2. He said that, you know, he always wanted to be number one. He didn't think that was achievable. AB4 was coming out. He was going to quit AB2 forever. Bye-bye. Now it's 2-2. Two to two. Vivi has had, I think, a really good day today. All of White Wolf Palace has, and this is a close series. And Vivi, I mean, he came back. I think it just took a you know a month and a half of playing AB4 to realize that statement was maybe a little much. And he's like, what? I can't leave AUE2, and here he is with his team performing well. And I think he was one of the main differences in this game. What he was able to do alongside Yo to, to Tato was incredible. Um, but I, what I loved about WWP in this game, the moment that really stood out to me was the moment where they ran directly to Tato. When Tato was, when they realized that Tato was the one who had to save Jordan. And Tato was the one who was going to be ahead of Yo. They just made a beeline straight to his base. Right through the middle. And he said, okay. And, and that was so huge. And yes, Dow played a really good game here. Yes, Dow did uh, as good as Licks. Maybe arguably better at times. Um, Licks was still holding his own. And was always going to be able to stabilize. Jordan, they knew couldn't. They knew Tato would be the savior. And they denied that opportunity. Here's the KD for you. Vivi with 200 kills. 150 deaths. Um, it's just funny how, how the game swings in Age of Empires 2. Like, Yo got killed by Jordan's fast feudal. However, Jordan got killed by Vivi's fast castle. And so they had to make their situations worth it. And in the end, I think getting the crossbow player up to castle age made a very big difference in that game. Also, I think having Indians on a shorefish map helped Yo recover. I don't think Yo recovers the way he does in this game if he's not Indians. Cheaper vills and having the shorefish around is a great way to help yourself recover. All right, so it's a bit awkward to speed through this portion because there's oftentimes vill fighting at the start for position on uh, Black Forest, but it looks like Jordan's going to get his walls down. Great start for Jordan, actually, that he got his walls down already. And so we've got Jordan here in a teal playing as the Celts. And then he's up against the Mongols from Yo. And, ooh, Yo doesn't want to... Yo is worried here. Or, sorry, Jordan's worried. He doesn't want to bring his scout back in because then the villagers would run in. And so we had two villagers go forward for Jordan. He gets his walls down. Three villagers went forward for Yo. He's got a wall. I think that's good for Gamer Legion. Should be a better economy for, uh, for Jordan. Also, Yo is about to... Oh, my God. I thought he was about to lose a villager. On this side, we do have the Vill Warring. And okay, this is where it gets crazy. Guys, if Lix can get through here, it's good for him because he's Lithuanians. And he starts with extra food. But what that means is he can afford to create more villagers. But I think the Vill Micro has been... Uh, interesting. And remember, the Scout for Vivi is not in support because he's on the other side. So I think this is actually good for Game Religion on both sides. And this should be a doink. She should be dead. She is dead. And another villager could go down as well. Oh my goodness. Gamer Legion are, are so far ahead right now. Another villager down. This is so good for Gamer Legion. Oh my word. Now this is where... This is where... Oh, hold on. If Tato doesn't get his walls down... Sorry the colors changed again. That is another reason why we need to, to fix the way team positions works in Age of Empires 2. So Tato's in the blue and I got it wrong. But now, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, see, now you've got fresh villagers because you can afford to do that if you are Lithuanians. And now you have the scouts coming over from Yo and the scouts coming over from Vivi. And that's going to be a dead villager for Tato. And, oh my god, guys. I actually think Lix is going to get through. I think Lix is going to run in. No. What about over here? No. Okay, so it's crazy, and the reason they fight for position we'll talk about later. Here's a hole! There's a hole! Oh, he's through! Oh, Tato's in trouble! Both these Vills are gonna die. 
Both these villas are gonna die. That one's dead. This one's gonna die as well. Oh boy. And now they get the forward wall position and they can stop Tato from taking his boar. Oh no. Oh, and a sneak vill from Lix? Uh-oh. This is people a lot of people are talking about why Viper isn't playing. Uh it could be that he played AOE4 for a month. It could be the fact that he's sick right now. The real reason, which will never be public, okay? They don't want to share this, is because Viper is scared of this. All right? Deep down inside, yes, of course, Viper's sick. Yes, of course, there's other factors. And yes, of course, on the surface, one being sick might affect your ability to compete. But I think he's truly sick of the Lix factor, the sneak villager factor. And Lix has two villagers inside of the walls of Tato right now. And he's walled in this one. He's shooting Tato's boar here. Tato can't take this boar. Oh my god. I think Tato, like... <laughs> I don't want to use the word dead just yet. But, oh, he de-aggros it. No, it doesn't work. Oh, Tato's in big trouble, dude. Woo, that was a flurry of events. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's get an update on the other side. Yo is over here. Yo's got 18 vills. And for uh, for Jordan, he's got 19. So it was just a slight lead for Jordan. For the pockets, it should be similar. There is a pond, however, that's here and available for, uh, I guess, both players. Both players are adding fish. Doubt is the pocket in the green now. The colors have changed. And Doubt is hoping to get a big boom with Mongols. So he's not going to really offer a lot of early support. We then have Vivi over here as Kelts, who's probably also going to go for a big boom. This position, though, was so clutch and so well played from Lix. And uh, I, I sympathize with Tato. When we played the Amigos, I played Black Forest 1v1. Actually, I played Black Forest as well against Gamer Legion, both of which were nightmares. I, I really didn't want to play Black Forest. But anyways, I had to. And my job was to vill rush. And so the thing is, since Lithuanians start with 150 food in the bank, they are able to vill rush more effectively without their eco struggling. And also, hello, Lix, hello, Lix, 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 Lix! Ah, saved it. Oh my goodness. That was so well played from him. Almost lost the villager. Lix is the most annoying man in the world. He he is. Yeah, he's so good at those types of things and then he's got a wall going down between doubt and tato so he's he's dividing so he can conquer right now didn't have a lumber camp that whole time he's got 18 bills it's insane and then hid the sheep here oh no way guys tato this honestly saves tato the fact that tato had three boars which sometimes happens on black forest here completely saves him here because otherwise he would have had to take all of this and then he couldn't take this boar this actually might not be too bad for tato that is that is good he's also got more boars down here if he needs it i think he's gonna maybe add a dock there we do see feudal age coming in for jordan it looks like it's a fast castle play for him and he's gonna add more walls and then you have yo yo is about to hit feudal yo is going to stone so Yo is going to tower rush. Yo is going to be aggressive here. And I like this thought process. Um, I am a little unsure on on if this is the best play. I think it largely depends, of course, as it always does. And he's even got his scout over here. This scout's been everywhere. He had to walk all the way through doubt space to get over here, and he's being annoying. Still looking to see where the sneak vill is for Lix. And Lix has made two layers of walls. I'm waiting to see if Lix will go feudal or if maybe he'll run around with the vill and go castle age and maybe make knights. Lix did have two, but if you missed it, you, he sent the one back home. Isn't boar laming an admin loss? Boar laming is... Boar stealing is an admin loss, and apparently it doesn't apply to Black Forest because every Black Forest game I've seen, you can't do that. But you are right that the rules are really weird for this tourney where you can't steal boars, and it says in the rules... You can't take boars with the intention of not eating them. But I don't know. Okay, this is kind of funny. Shh. <laughs> Tato didn't notice. 
Tato didn't notice. Oh no. Um, so yeah. I've seen it a lot on Black Forest. No one has ever complained or talked about it, so there must be a change in the rules for Black Forest. Mm, no extra boars here for yo. It's like all the extra boars went over to Gamer Legion. Unless I missed some. Okay, never mind. I lied. Oh my god. Okay, there's boars. I, I lied. And then Lix is planning something with her. As Tato is trying to force more walls from Lix behind all this, which Lix will have to do. Actually, is there a tile gap there? Oh, there's a Vil repairing. I didn't see that. Okay. Okay, here you've got another boar being brought in from Vivi. Vivi's castle time for a player who has been untouched is actually really bad. Jordan's going to have a faster castle time, but I think he will have enough resources to probably go for four TCs. And I think Doubt has seen this, and Doubt's probably like, well, good luck, Tato. Like, I got a boom here. So, best of luck to you. And the We Got Yo possibly worried that Jordan is going to siege push this tower because he gave up on the tower rush. And so he's on stone, and he's going to probably drop a castle here. And I think they might need to wall here. Yeah, another boar being brought in. And that's a pretty late castle time for someone that has all the resources that Vivi has. And yeah, we have more Vils fighting. A villager actually died here. Look at that. Jordan had his scout, and he helped. And so Lix really doesn't want to have to deal with any of this right now. And there's a chance that Tato will actually break through. Tato did break through. All right. This villager, of course, still hanging out here for Lix, but guys, Lix isn't looking like he's in the greatest spot anymore. That villager's now trapped, and Tato's going to wall it up further forward. The reason you want a forward wall position is because if they pressure you with, like, siege, you want to be able to wall behind it. With this type of a wall, Lix could have done anything to pressure, and then Tato's TC would be right behind. It was Scotty. Thank you so much for the stars, man. He says, I can't believe I'm finally watching t live. Aussie watcher here, been watching you for ages with my eight-year-old and ten-year-old kids. Welcome, man. That's awesome. Noth nothing says uh, family bonding quite like Age of Empires 2, man. A okay, forward castle here from Yo. It's a little antsy, though. It's a little antsy. There's going to be a Kelt Manganel here in a second. And imagine if Jordan can smash this and stop this. Look at his eco behind this. TC. TC. He's going to have so many villagers. So he needs... The dangerous thing for Kelts is being up against... Oh, great job from Yo to delay this. Is being up against Mangadai. It looks like that is going to be the case. And we have a signal from Lix, and I think Lix is like, guys, they're in here. And there's Tato. Tato's about to hit Feudal. <laughs> and uh, he's going to be as annoying as possible. And this barracks is all reaction from him breaking in. So Vivi's being told, you can't just focus on your eco now. Because pressure's coming. And she wants to go five TCs. What? Jordan's scouting. I love the teamwork. So he's, he'll see the stable and he'll tell his teammates, hey, he's going to go for something like knights. And you can see the signals now. So Jordan says, there's a stable. You can see the signals. And then Lick says, he might be over there somewhere. Now, guys, Tato's wandering over here to build an outpost. Will we actually see a stable go down for Lick's? It feels like Lix does not have any intention of using this vill. And if this gets spotted, I feel like this is going to be much better for Gamer Legion. I mean, it already is much better for Gamer Legion right now. Because of the economy from Jordan and from Doubt. And the Tato has recovered. And okay, Lix noticed this. And now this is Tato's point of view after the outpost. <gasps> oh my god! Now, he can't build anything without Tato noticing it. Also, chopping that tree is a mistake. You see what happens in the, in the fog? Tato might look there. But she's still hidden. Now, I guess what Lix wants to do is he wants to go for, like, maybe monasteries. So, Lithuanians are a very good monk rush tiv. So, he might go for a defensive monastery and a forward monastery. Wow. Wow. Here comes Doubt with Monks and Siege. And Doubt was fully expecting a Night Rush here. So he's trying to find that Vil. <laughs> and now the Vil can't leave, though. <laughs> what is this? No, what? Licks. 
You can't even get out of here. And Tato sees it immediately. We have to say great reaction from Tato. But he's just going to wall it up. It's the worst monastery ever. This does nothing. He could... Okay, he could pop out with a monk here. Okay? He could pop out with a monk here and like... I, I guess that's something. But you can't even take out walls with monks. So that just seems like it's completely useless. So as good as Lix was at the start, it has been just as bad after the fact. Let's put it that way. 32 eco, just now adding a second TC. And I think Tato, I mean, full credit to him. Whoa, what's she doing over here? Okay, Doubt's going to take that villager to add to his economy. It is obviously unfortunate for Lix that he doesn't have a pond. This is actually, guys, this is admin readable. If the, but the players have to request it. So I actually learned this because we had a game in this tournament where the opponent had better pawns and had access to pawns. And we did not. And so I spoke to the admins about it afterwards. And they said, where the pawn... Actually, they might be talking about this right now. I don't know if there's a time limit on when it needs to be brought up. They might be talking about this right now. Because this... If you look at the teams, right? There's no pawn for Yo. There's a pond for Vivi, and there's no pond for Lix. Tato's got a pond. Scout's got a pond. So what I was told was two ponds per team, but it is random who that goes to. Now, we are at 23 minutes. It is also played on Explored. So admins might be like, well, you can't call the restart now because you waited too long. But yes, it was a point that I had brought up before is that I think the pawns, I mean, there's other factors too, but I really think the pawns are on a bit unfair at times here. And if I had to guess, I would say they're, they're discussing it right now. This gold, I mean, th this is also unfortunate. Uh, but there is like stone and gold and a relic here too. This happens. These are extra resources. But the thing, here's my argument against, oh, you have to call it yourself between five, in the first four to five minutes. So when that happened to us, guys, the admins were watching, right? So, like, that should be called out if the admins are watching, right? This is a semifinal. I don't think it should be on Licks as he's vil warring in the first five to ten minutes. I don't think it should be on Licks to have to look around and call a bugged map. You think this is an issue with the boar laming rules? Okay, I don't know what it is. But anyways, do you guys agree with that? Like, sure, if they get walled up, then whatever. But you can't have someone looking around to check maps when they're vil fighting at the start. They're discussing an admin win for GL due to the boar laming. Really? Well, here's the deal. I've seen instances where that has happened in other games and there hasn't been admin reads, so there's got to be some consistency here. I hope Gamer Legion, I hope Gamer Legion don't take it, and I hope they continue to play. But I guess if it's within the rules that you can't shoot the boars down like that, then I don't know. I want to go back and look at other wrecks because I've seen that happen, but I, I hope that this continues to be played out. Also, why would that be brought up now instead of when the boar laming happened? Right? Now, I could be wrong. I don't actually know if they're all watching. They might be busy on their weekend. They might have other stuff going on. But, like, I'll give you... Th now, there have also been instances, so to be fair, about the situation. Um, There was an instance in the 2v2 World Cup where I didn't realize, so as an admin, I didn't realize that there was a map that was bugged uh, until way later, till it was brought up later. So that there are... Maybe it's just, like, something you don't realize. But the boar laming thing seems pretty obvious, you know? Feels very weird to have that conversation now. But we'll see. I disagree, to be honest. WWP should call it out if it's an issue. If not, it's not like Yellow was too busy to check. Yeah, maybe, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's a fair point. Like, I guess Vivi could have looked. But there's no way Lix... Like, Lix is the one... Vivi's already has a pond, right? So he's he's not worried about looking for pawns because he has one. 
I, there's no world where Lick should call that out. And anyone who thinks that has never had to veil war before. <laughs> Alan says, if this is an issue that happens often, you should ensure that your pocket checks. Yeah, maybe. Or you could say, if this is an issue that happens often, they should look at the map scripts and maybe make it more consistent. Which was kind of my point back in the group stage. Um, I don't think... Like, we're at a point in Age of Empires 2 where if you're putting maps into tournaments, you should be able to get a consistency down with scripts where it shouldn't be a big issue. So, I don't know. I didn't actually hear... Let me see if they said anything in the Discord. Okay, hold on a second. Ah, this is sick. Okay, everyone should say thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at this. So, Jordan says, Discuss Discussing with admins right now, killing boars isn't allowed, which Lix did. Jordan says, we asking if we can still continue. Okay, they allow. And Yo says, thank you. And they 14. This is good. This is very, very good. Good on Gamer Legion. Granted, I think they are a little bit ahead, which helps. Like, if they were behind, they might think differently. But good on Gamer Legion to make that decision. And actually, right after they unpaused here, they were able to clear up Tato's villagers. So, so I guess, according to the rules, you can't do what Lix did. It's still weird to me because I've seen it before. Um, and they said, you know what? Let's just play it anyways. A very sportsmanlike. Again, would be different if there wouldn't have been boars here and then a pond for Tato. Like, Tato's eco is so much better uh, or will be so much better than, uh, than Lix's, I feel. But we get to continue our game. I like to see it. No one, no one wants to just start the game over again. Or actually, what it would have been in that case is a free win for Gamer Legion. Obviously, arguments on either side. If it's in the rules, you can take the W, but Gamer Legion says, nope, we want to earn it here. And guys, Dal and Vivi click up to Imp at basically the same time, and their economies are incredible right now. Dal's got 105 villagers, three relics, which will bring him gold. It is all going to come down to how much Dal is able to mass as he's going to get relic number four for gold. And what side he goes to. Now, Vivi... Vivi has to choose a side as well. Like, if Vivi comes over and goes to kill Tato, for example, I think they would kill Tato. However, then Yo would die to Jordan. And actually, guys, I think I think WWP's in a really bad spot right now. Because Jordan's gone up to Imp quite early, actually. Normally, you'd go up to 100-some vills. He's intentionally gone up faster with less vill numbers or fewer vills so we can go trebs. So he will push down Yo's castle. Then you're going to have castles from Vivi. But Vivi won't have anything beyond that. I guess he's going to go Halb maybe because he's getting infantry armor. Meanwhile, Doubt, Doubt doesn't have to worry about Trebs now. And that's normally the biggest thing. If it was just Doubt pushing, he wouldn't be able to create Mangadai. And he would be creating Trebs from his castles. But instead, he can focus on the Mangadai. I mean, they, these guys have their little fight over here, sure. That is going to be as annoying as possible. I get it. But, you know, to me, it's like these two are kind of out of the game at the moment. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> there's Tatooine deleted the walls around the monastery, which is actually a little risky because there's a monk in there. But we'll see if Yo and Vivi can hold this side. How good was Vivi before leaving and coming back? Well, to be honest, he's only been gone. He was only gone for like two months. Right? This is the first tournament we've... Or not even the first tournament we've seen him since he quote-unquote came back. But he posted in October that he was quitting. And then he came back in like December. A month and a half on AOE 4 and then he pretty much stopped playing. Um, but how good was he? Well, at his peak was probably before towers were nerfed. Uh, back in 2018, that was when Vivi was at his peak. He was taking games off of like everybody at that point. Vivi was probably the reason that a lot of people that towers were nerfed. He's kind of like Huang, where uh, Huang got Celts nerfed. It's kind of sad to me that if one player is dominant with a certain strat, that it ends up getting nerfed. But we've had our conversations about towers before on this stream. I still think they're a little too weak right now. But uh, but yeah, so Vivi was up there. He was top ten for a while. I don't think he is anymore though. I think the the high level just got better and better and better. Vivi, not really a player to practice, not really a player to train. 
So it kind of stagnated at around the top 20. Now we've got Siege Onager on the way already for Vivi. But Yo's still two minutes away from Imp, and he's not even trying to repair his castle. Now he's going to try and repair it now. So you're going to have Siege Onager for Vivi on the other side, still not seeing much. Monk still didn't even hop out here for Licks. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of Licks games. I'd love to see him pop out and just convert a Ville and just wall it in. Just be annoying, you know? Lithuanians, you know, they're good with Paladins or Latis. Good with Monks, maybe. Here comes the cut from Jordan. Jordan's got to be careful here. He doesn't have the eco that Vivi does. Yo being careful as well. He doesn't know what's back here exactly. Okay, and now they see it. Now they see the Mangadai. Castle's down for Yo. Treb's going down for Vivi. And oh! Doubt snipes the Siege Onager and gets out. But actually, Jordan's blocking right now. <laughs> okay. Like, Jordan won't have SO, so I don't know how far you could push in here if you're Jordan and if you're Doubt. Yo, hoping to mass his Mangadai, but he just lost a castle, which won't help matters. I like how defensive he's placed the next one. Tato still just being a pest. Coming in with Light Cabin Knights now. I guess he'll try and take out the Siege Workshop as Lix will have to deal with that, but not the side we really need to look at. Siege Onager now on the way for Jordan. Just checking. We do also have Fuhrer Celtica for uh, Vivi. So he's got 100 HP on his Siege. Jordan will need that, and he'll need to complete Siege Onager. At what point do you just delete these walls and consider running through here? Are they at that point? I'm not sure. Now, Mang and I have a bonus against Siege, but oh, no way, Doubt. Oh my god, that was so sick. That was so sick. That's what they can do. Also, if you guys really like Black Forest, I highly encourage you watch the uh, MBL vs. Doubt game, uh, Black Forest 1v1 from about two years ago. It was a while ago now, because Black Forest was actually in the 1v1 pool. But it was, it was amazing. And, and Doubt played really well in that game, as did MBL, of course. And great job from Doubt. That's totally worth it. Shows what the Mangadai are capable of. SO is uh, not significant other in this case. We're talking about Siege Onager. And no SO yet for Jordan. Still decent value, but you can see the difference between Siege Onager. As now Jordan has the same upgrades on the Siege Onagers, and now he's making a difference. Vivi's castle got trebbed down. Jordan with the attack grounds, maybe? All right. Meanwhile, Tato's on the way to Imp. Behind him is Lix. But Lix is behind Tato with everything, with economy, with position. We went from the Dark Age and all the Vil Warring to Lix really not having a follow-up here. Doubt sees the Mangadai from Yo. Yo still so far behind. He doesn't even have Elite Mangadai yet. You can see why Gamer Legion wanted, wanted to continue here because their position, it looks and feels strong. Love the walls from Yo, though. It did buy him some time. And we'll see if Vivi can get a big shot. Oh, he fired on the Mangadai. And no. I'm not sure why that was added. That made no sense to me. Big shot. Okay, but well, this is the last couple minutes has been really bad for WWP, man. <laughs> They're losing so much siege, so much ground. And honestly, if I'm Jordan right now, I see the siege workshops and I just take them out. Force more siege workshops. If you don't see castles, just go for the siege. Really got to babysit this army right now. Okay. Chemistry isn't in yet for Jordan. That's a that's an upgrade that does matter here. Oh, geez. That choke point, though. Ooh, good split from Yo. This is going to be crazy. Boom. Big shots. Another one. Boom. And that's the danger. That's the danger of moving into a choke point like that. But he is going to take out the castle from Vivi. Now, it's still got all of his manga die. I don't want to speak too soon here, obviously. And, okay, Vivi recovering a little bit, but Doubt helping out with the Manga Dye. I like it, but keep in mind, Yo is always here as well. On the other side, we are going to have a 1v1 battle. And great couple moments here for WWP. 
As suddenly, there's not a ton of siege remaining for Jordan, but then again, there's nothing for Vivi. Absolutely love what these Trebs are doing to all the buildings. Back on this side, you've got Tato ready to go into a Treb war here. He's making Kustie, guys. He's also getting chemistry, so he will likely go for Bombard Cannons to pressure all this. And Vivi, or Lick, sorry, is trying to go for Knights. But he's, he's making Knights underneath the castles. Like we did miss a pretty big shot over here. As Doubt has 70 military right now. And you can see a lot of it coming over to Lix. Really struggling to see how Lix is going to survive there. And so now it's on Yo and it's on Vivi to push on the other side. Because Doubt doesn't have all of his military here. But look at these siege onager numbers from Jordan. I think this is where you need to start taking some big risks if you're Yo. And just snipe the SO. Sniping the Siege Onager all the time should be your focus here. But no! It didn't happen. That was not worth it. We are getting some decent shots from Vivi, but they're still not pushing back. And here come the Mangadai on this side. And Vivi had brought Halbs over. And he was here to help Lix against the Kustier, but that's not going to happen now. Not with Mangadai here. So good from Doubt to arrive to that side. It's like the second that Halbs showed up pushback Tato, Doubt was already there with Mangadai. Really good game sense from these two. And then Jordan's just full boom, making only Siege Onager, and says, why would I ever make Halp? That's a waste of pop space. Doesn't make any sense to me. Siege Onagers will go down here for Vivi. He is here to help, but the castle drops. Paladin's on the way. Not from the forward stables, which is important. Will Paladin be able to match up to the Mangadai Acoustia? And just the position right now. The ability to run right into the trade with the Mangadai is still there for Gamer Legion. They are kind of in the trade here. Yo did a good job with his castles. I think if he would have made them further forward, it would be game over already. Someone in my chat just said, this is ugly. And yeah, th this is extremely ugly right now. Because we've got 16 Siege Onagers... For six on the map? And I'm not even sure if all the Siege Onagers are on this side right now for Vivi. Kind of seems like they are. He does need it here. And look at Doubt. Boop. 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 There you go. Takes out the Siege. And the GG's called as the Coustier run into Lix's base. And Gamer Legion, despite an awful start for Tato, recovered. And what a statement from them. What a response from them. Like, you know, you could have easily, first off, taken the admin win, apparently. You could have said, no, you know what? You broke a rule. Sorry, tisk tisk," And taken the win that way. They didn't do that. Pato had recovered already from a pretty good position. Dowd had a great game. Jordan had a great game. And Gamer Legion, I think, undefeated on Black Forest in this tourney. I think it's been their best map. And they looked really good there. The thing that disappoints me... And we talked about the pond, right? This could have been, this should have been admin re, I think, if the players would have requested it. So that's something that hurts right now to see if you're White Wolf Palace. But honestly, Lix, he had such a good opening. And he snuck a vill. And he didn't even try and do anything with it. Like, yeah, okay, he did force Doubt into some reactions. Maybe he saw Doubt was making monks in siege. But I feel like what gives you the freedom to boom at home is if you have pressure on the front. And this type of a position where he had the vill would have been so nice. I know Tazo had the outpost, but he could have had a stable by then. He could have added a scout or two. And I, I don't know. I just, when you have Licks in Black Forest, especially when you have Lithuanians, which is a sieve that, eh, I don't know, is really that good for anything but the early aggro. Just go for a rush, man. Don't try and boom up here. Tazo did a much better job with the boom. He had the better booming sieve. We didn't talk about Burgundians much, but being able to, to get your eco upgrades one age earlier obviously helped. And also, Yo's forward castle. He made the castle, and he did nothing with it. So I think he made the castle because he was worried Jordan was going to rush him. Jordan went for the eco and the faster imp instead. And everything from Gamer Legion just looked much smarter, I would say, in that game. Yet again, another home map victory happens. This is a best of seven. So the games will continue. Someone was already cheering. The Gamer Legion has moved on to the final. That's not the case yet. Here we go. Game number six. 
And, ooh, interesting choices here. All right, ladies and gents. Well, let's do the introductions. We're going to be speeding up. This is Fortress, not Regicide Fortress, which is a bit of a bummer. I feel like Regicide Fortress and Self Fortress should be played. You know me, just super opinionated all the time. But here is the flank. We have Kumins. If you're already on the way to Feudal Age on Fortress, you start with a lot of Vils, which is why this is possible. Pocket is Yo playing as the Franks. Yo loves his Paladin Sifts. And then here in the red, we have Lix. Lix is playing as the Chinese. Lix is up against Jordan, playing as the Vietnamese. This is what I expected, if you remember. And then in the green, we've got Doubt. Doubt is playing as the Slavs. Wait, it is Regicide. Oh. Oh, okay, that is Regicide. I'm sorry, it didn't show a king here. So, okay, kings are important. And then uh, Pocket, or Flank, sorry, Tato, playing as the Chinese. So the normal meta is this. We're caught up to normal time now. You have the flanks, boom, and make archers, okay? So you have the flanks, boom, and make archers. Chinese is one of the best sieves for this because you start with extra vills as Chinese. And since you start with pre-built farms and you start with basically eco, you aren't going to have a lot of idle time at the start, which is what you would have on a normal map. So Chinese are top tier for this, which is why both teams have them. I think Vietnamese is a good choice. Because if you get rats and archers masked, it is probably the best archer unit against other archers. And in particular, I think it looks good against Chinese because Chinese will be making Chukunu. And then you have the Ratsen player right beside them. So I like that. And then the pocket or middle player is normally making uh, knight units. So Doubt's gone Slavs, which tells me this is going to be all about killing fast. Because the enemies on the other side... A paladin, and that would be Yo as the best paladins in the game. So you want to finish the game before this goes late, before the fact you don't get paladin kicks in. That should be conversations both both teams are happening, excuse me, or having. Um, now, there are kings, okay? Which means it is regicide, which means if you kill a king, you do actually win the game. Just don't get your hopes up. That doesn't happen too frequently. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. Initially, I was thinking you'd pick Kumins, put them in the middle, and have them go fast feudal, two TCs, boom, into Paladins. However, you're now flank. One of the best things you can do with Kumins, because of how much eco they bring in in feudal, which is happening right now for Vivi, is you can go for enough kip checks to take map control, drop a forward castle, and then go fast imp. You go fast imp, kip check, trebuchet, you start pushing back the flank player, and then the uh, the cavalry comes in and support. So I don't know if that's really the best late game option. Maybe they want to play a bit more late game oriented. But yeah. It is true. Gamer Legion did lose a game on this map when they were winning. Uh, and I actually really wanted to cast this one. Thank you for reminding me. And uh, anyways, Nilly's King got sniped. They're winning the game. And uh, I forget who they were playing, but they ran in. They, f they saw a tower. They killed the king. Ended up losing the game due to that. So it does happen. It's not too frequently. Yo, buying some stone here. Interesting choice. See, a lot of the time what you'll see is you'll just see them mine the extra stone. That's what Doubt did. Doubt took some stone from this here. So he took 55 stone. He only needed 50. I think Jordan's doing the same. See, Jordan, yeah, it says he has one on stone. You start with 150 stone on Regicide, so it's got its own build order. He collected that stone. <laughs> that has to be one of the most embarrassing moments in tournament history. Uh, yeah, it definitely is, and definitely uh, forget about the archery range story. Thank you. I think what's great for Tata is just his map. His castle's on the back, so he's not super vulnerable to a fast imp treb push. His gold's on the back. His stone's on the back, too. His towers are also positioned quite nicely on the other side. Like, kind of depends. But, like, this castle, for example, is a lot more vulnerable to a forward castle and trebs. Yeah, the reason we still see Vivi in Feudal is because Vivi's at 46 vils. And Vivi's been booming on two TCs. So, 47 villagers... But normally what happens, because now Tattoo's going to have three TCs, is normally it's going to be about even. The difference is, though, look at the farm count. 
So this is why I'm curious to see if we're going to see any more villagers go to stone for Vivi. Like, this is, I think, maybe going to be for stone. Kip checks are just not a very great unit in the long run. So I'm torn. Like, on one hand, you want this game to go late because you have Paladin and the opponent cannot make Paladin. On the other hand, Kumans kind of suck if it goes late game. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you really want to do that. Here comes Tato. So you notice Tato still has two on stone. So it's a, it's a full boom, but you just trickle a few villagers on stone to start to save for the castle. Now Vivi. I mean, this, this golden stone position is honestly so frustrating to see. You start with towers, and you start with a castle. And all the towers are in the backside, and his castle's in the backside. This is awful, dude. I actually... I didn't realize how bad this was until now. I feel so bad for Vivi. This is complete RNG, obviously, and Regicide Fortress, you think you'd just be fortunate enough in some cases, but nope. This is so bad. I, I feel so bad for him. Like, what's he supposed to do about that? Maybe he could have made his TC out here or something. Whereas Tato's gold was perfectly on the back. Obviously, Viper not playing today, but he, of course, shared the map pack, so looking good for him. Uh, okay, Jordan. Attacking here, but will not get the kill. But Tato's also here, so they're maybe going to work together on this, but... Just a full boom for Yo. Yo brings his own scout over and is like, no. Get away. So he did house wall and market wall this, which is very intelligent. And he's taking this gold now, which is good for him. He's making kip checks. I swear, guys, he's going to go for kip checks... He's going to try and clear this, and he's going to go for a forward castle. Look at his food count. He has not added a third town center. The thing he needs, though, is he needs stone for this. For this to work, he definitely needs stone. Um, there's Vivi. He should chase down Tato's scout. Good work. Tato's signaling and saying he's walling there. Now, Tato might be tempted to send the Chukunu around to that area. But I think the key here for Tato is that he maintains his control in the middle. Over here, by the way, we don't see any rat and archers yet. Now, slabs have faster farms. So, in theory, you could see Doubt Imp a little faster than Yo and afford a few more upgrades, a few more Cavalier when the time comes to make them. So, I think this game will end before the hour mark. If it does not end before the hour mark, I guess in some ways, advantage to the Frank team. But also in other ways, maybe not because of Kumans and the question marks I have over that sieve. Jordan just lost his scout. I was looking around. We have walls for Tato. And you're going to see the villagers come. Ah, oh, he doesn't have the stone yet. I like the imp time. I don't like the stone count right now for Vivi. He really is going to want a forward castle here. But now, guys, you're still two TCs, right? Your main, one of your TCs is... Not creating vills because it's imping. So you've got one TC creating villagers versus three. So Tato's economy is going to be so much better now. Build Yo's scout. I think, I think this is looking good for Gamer Legion at the moment. The fact that there's not a forward castle here is such a big deal. The fact that Tato's castle is on the back. And so they can't be a, it can't be a fast kill here is also a big deal. I think Tato would stop it anyways. Like Tato... Humans don't get Bracer, so he doesn't have to worry about that coming in. I think Tato's Chukunu are the superior units right now. Like, a dude on foot has more HP than these dudes on horses. That's Kip checks for you. They're really just not a great unit. Over here, though, we've got Rats and Archers. Again, I talked about how Rats and Archers versus Chukunu are gonna, is going to be amazing because Rats and Archers are the superior archer. So I'm I'm looking over at Yo now and I'm like, all right, buddy, like you better have a great game here because it's not gonna be too great for Licks on this side. I don't know what you make as Chinese because the Chukunu is just not an option. Really, am surprised to see Franks and Kumans in the same game. I was expecting Kumans pocket with Vietnamese Chinese flanks. It would have been a similar thing on both sides, but WWP, as I've said before. They're not as meta. They, they don't see the game the same way as I do or maybe Gamer Legion. 
got a lot of extra faith in Yo when he's playing as a Paladin Civ, and there goes Yo. He's clicked up now. So here's the issue. You're an imp now, okay? You're an imp now, and you don't have a castle yet. So he's walking forward. He's going to finish a castle. All these upgrades, by the way, are upgrades he could have done in castle. By the time his castle's complete, Tato's going to be an imp too. And now Tato has the greater economy. So I'm really a big fan of how this has developed so far. However, I do like how he hasn't gone for the forward castle now. Having it out here is better, I think, because it would invite easy tread pressure from Tato if he put build it next to the wall. But it's like... Don't get Bracer. Uh, he's housed right now, so he can't even bring the Treb forward. And this doesn't feel too strong right now. Over here, we've got to push back, but I don't think Lix knows that Jordan has his castle behind here. Actually, you know what? Lix adding the siege and getting this castle up is pretty big because he will like, be able to see Jordan's castle behind this. And by the way, I think Jordan's king, if you're wondering is is here also what the there's a chew canoe in there with tato's king <laughs> what are you doing tato that must have been a mistake that's funny man okay so tato put his king in doubt space jordan put his king in doubt space and then doubt's king is in doubt space that's a smart play but that's that's really funny that he has a chew canoe in there so here comes licks and he's like all right let's look for the castle or any forward resource. What's there? Nothing. Fortunately for him, he's been able to take his things. Fortunately for him, he is now making Trebs first. So faster than Tato. Speaking of faster, guys. Wait a second. Look at yo. So he's getting chivalry, guys. Which increases the production speed of stables. But also what's important about that is it increases... I think it just increases the, the speed of everything that happens with the stables. Which also applies to the Cavalier upgrade. So Yo is out boomed doubt a little bit. And Cavalier is gonna zoom right in. And I think he goes instantly for Paladin, though I could be wrong. If he's hearing that the Treb push has kind of started off well for Lix, then maybe he's gonna wait for Paladin. But he might also want to go for numbers. Because Vivi's probably gonna feel like these Kipchaks are just not gonna be good enough. 100 bills for Tato, 87 for Vivi. It is 350 eco versus 305 right now with Gamer Legion it ahead as a team. You want to stop rats and archers. You need something other than archers. It is an anti-archer archer. Jordan knows it. Really curious if these trebs can actually push forward and take out that castle right now. Rocketry on the way for Tato. So that'll make these two canoe even stronger. Another castle for Vivi. Seems like they might make a push towards the trade, guys. Look at Yo. He's already adding markets. So is Lix. So maybe this is all about an early push towards the trade to deny their trade. And then they can go for a crazy boom. The trade cards. Oh, I love this castle for Yo. They know that there's a castle there for Jordan. And now Jar Jordan's starting to lose this castle. And Doubt's going elite Boyar? What? He's making boyars? Well, they're, they've got tons of melee armor, guys. It's like a Teutonic Knight on a horse. We don't see it work all that... Or we haven't seen a lot of boyars over the years. I think the reason for that is it takes so much time to get there compared to Paladin. But maybe going boyar is the answer. Elix, all he wanted to do was take out the castles. He did that. And he's going to back away and maybe go for this one next. But here come the Paladin with the Chukonu. And the thing about Boyars is they don't have a ton of Pierce. Wait, do they have seven Pierce? Since when? I didn't know they had seven Pierce. I mean, it's still worse than a Paladin against Archers. But that's actually not bad. And I guess if you compare the attack of the Kipchex to the Chukonu, the Chukonu have double the attack right now. We've got seven attack versus 14 attack. Actually did the math right for once. Elite Chukunu on the way. This push continues. And Jordan is going to start to push back these castles. But Lix should be able to treb down this one. Which I think hurts Jordan. Also, if Jordan's base is ever opened up here, then the Paladins could run in and snipe the siege. So I think that's what Lix actually needs to do. I think he's not going to think about it now, but treb down the gate 
or keep the walls down so then support can come in with paladins. Yo is going to see this and be shocked. And now Vivi's like, uh, I need support. And Doubt with the Boyars has 40 of them. He has more Boyars than Yo has Paladins. Holy crap. And they're going to take the engagement. The melee units go after the ranged units. But again, Kip checks are not going to be able to do all that much against these Boyars. These Boyars are very strong. The Trebs go down. I think double castle with Chukunu with Boyar support is going to be better for Gamer Legion. So on this side, the Chukunu are canceled out of the equation by the Vietnamese. It's just not a great unit now that the, the Vietnamese are out here. And then on this side, the Chukunu are dominating. So they have addressed the Chinese with one pick. And then they're using the Chinese to address the other with the other pick. This is really smart thinking from Gamer Legion. We've got a big battle here. There is a lot more HP for Gamer Legion. They've got the numbers of Eco. They've got the numbers of Military. They've got the Trebs now. And I'm sitting here looking at these Kip checks. And they've got 11 kills. And I'm just like, what did you expect, basically? <laughs> like, I, again, what they needed was a forward castle for Tato. They needed uh, Vivi to have a better stone position so he could maybe place his castle there. And look at this, though. Yo trying to break in. Jordan with the damage control trying to get the gates down. The Paladins will dive in. And now this is a bit of a swing here as the Bomber Cannons for Jordan should all go down. Now, can he get Stonewalls around the wood line? Stonewall, Jordan. Stonewall. Alice. Ah! Palisade. Okay, this is huge. This is good. Still here. We're going to see a castle go down for Jordan. Here, you're probably going to have Vivi dying. Tato's got 80 Chukunu. <laughs> okay, here come Chukunu to take out the Bombard Cannons now. But at what cost, really? I mean, you lose you lose all your army. But at least he holds the position, and now Tato doesn't... Or Jordan doesn't have many castles on the front. Dow coming in support with his Boyars. We have to look back to the trade. The trade is about to start right now for Gamer Legion. The trade has already begun for Yo... But they are struggling to find the numbers. Also, Vivi badly housed. Vivi made a line of castles on the front. Did Vivi switch to Paladin and go double Pala? Not really. See, the thing is, Chukunu is good against Paladin. Because they have all that attack and the firing speed. So, Chukunu is good against Paladin. As is. And then you have the Meat Shield. So if you go double melee against Boyars in the first place, it's not great because Boyars have extra armor. So they, they should win the fight against the Paladin. But then you have that whole melee ranged comp. What you want is you want range behind melee. So it's... I'm just... I liked Kumans for this map, but never for Kip Checks. It kind of reminds me of the Arena game. Where WWP picked civs that didn't really have the best units and gamer legion thought about the best late game comp and that's what they shot for what do they make against this comp is kind of the question you you never want to ask right it's a time thing here we talked about how yes you've got paladin but i was never expecting boyar so boyar has matched the paladin at you know at the very least you'd say Guys, these Chukunu here aren't even fully upgraded, by the way. They've got 8 plus 4, not 8 plus 6. And we're, so that means you're doing 2 damage a hit to the Ratans. Because Ratans have 10 Pierce Armor. 2 damage a hit is just not going to be enough. The Chukunu pour in. The Boyars pour in. And this game is over. This this game is over. You can't go Kip Checks anymore. If you go Habs, it's not going to work either. Vivi can genuinely do nothing. There's no time for him to switch into anything else. He's losing his main resources now. They're not doing any damage to Gamer Legion. Look at the walls from Gamer Legion. So smart. And honestly, both sides are losing right now. Looks like WWP have been out thought here in this game. I do think there's some unfortunate things for Vivi. I think the stone position was really bad. I think that influenced when he could have had his first castle. I think Tato was fortunate that his castle was on the back. But, you know, if they win this game, they go into a final game where I think Franks are actually even pretty solid Civ. I'm not sure about having 
Kumins in the first place, it just hasn't looked to be very strong. And I said three games ago this was going to be Kumins pocket, and then it was going to be Chinese and Vietnamese on the flanks. So I don't have any disagreements with how Vivi tried to play it, except for maybe hoping to get the castle up a little faster. I just think we're seeing why Kumins isn't necessarily the best pick. That, that's where I'm at. That said, let's talk trade for just a split second, okay? So we're going to go to the trade numbers. And WWP does have more trade. Nice little raid here on Jordan. Nice little raid here on Doubt. And still a line of castles for Licks. If they can continue to trade and somehow stop this, maybe they've got a chance. I don't know how, though. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah, our base. I think the more closed maps benefited GL, but I think they, they're they just so much better. Like, GL are masters at looking at a map and knowing where the sibs are going to fit. There, I don't think I've had a lot of questions today over GL. Or really the entire tourney, except for maybe the set they played against us. Say, why would you why would you pick the sieve here, you know? And even in moments where I'd be like, whoa, that unit comp... Like, what, remember the Ballista Elephants? I was like, oh, Ballista Elephants, this is going to be a throw. And then guess what? Ballista Elephants did really well. So I think they, they understand what unit is stage of the game where they're going to have success, and they understand which units they need to be making a whole lot more. Thing is, WWP still has more eco. It's just, can they stop Vivi from dying? Yo, Yo is trying to go for a lot of paladins right now, and he's hoping that's going to do it. If they can take out Jordan's castles, which we said before, they've got a chance because then Chukunu can really dominate. So they're working on that. Meanwhile, Tato is solely working on Vivi. Here comes some paladins from Yo to help out. I don't think Kumans get Heavy Camel. So I, I don't think Kumans get Heavy Camel, but the other thing about Camels is they lack Pierce Armor. So Camels are a very low Pierce Armor unit, which means that two canoes would kill them even faster than anything else you can make, right? Now what you could eventually do is go Siege Jonager, right? You could go Siege Jonager, but that's like way in the future. That would be if, this, if they hold this long enough. So they've got the Castles. If they can hold long enough and get Kumans on Siege Jonager, granted, Dow could go Siege Jonager with uh, his Civ too, but that would be really that. That's where the game starts to, to change a little bit with Kumans. Vivi's King is probably in here somewhere. Yeah, Vivi's King is in that tower. You don't have to worry about his King going down. He has held on for now. And 65 HP with 8 attack against 50 HP with 14 attack. Not really a close battle. We've got some bombard towers here for Licks. They're looking to run in here and maybe take out bomber cannons for Jordan. That's been the problem for Jordan. The problem for him has been oh boy, big boyar ball. That is not a fight paladins want to be taking, people. God, I love this boyar choice so much. Anyone else hyped to see this? I like. I'm so happy that they didn't just go Cavalier and be like, well, I don't get Paladin. I've got to make more. I'm so happy that they thought past that and that this is actually a thing here. Like, it's a very Gamer Legion thing to do. But I'm looking at the stats of these Boyars right now. And for some reason, I thought they lacked Pierce Armor. But if they don't lack the Pierce Armor, I don't see many negative reasons why you wouldn't go for this here. Obviously, they do lack HP compared to the Paladins, but it's not a lot. With all the armor, they should take better fights against Paladins, and they take they tank equally, I guess, against Archers. That's awesome. Oh, we've got Kumin Skirms. Remember, Kumins don't get Bracer. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is also the second time Vivi's been making Skirms with a bad Skirm Civ in this series. But it's because everything else that he tried just didn't work out. It was back in that arena game. Great job from Jordan to still hold this position. He doesn't have to push. He just needs to hold this position. The doubt's going in for a raid. Maybe going in for the kill, actually. Yeah, that castle's going to go down. They might be looking for the king, but... Their priority here is clearing up the base of Vivi. Vivi's got 88 army. And it's all trash, man. 
Maybe it's a little unfair to use the word trash. It just doesn't feel like it's very strong compared to the Chukadus, compared to the Ratans, compared to the Boyars, compared to the Paladins. Age of Empires 2 is a game of time windows and hitting your spot when you have to before your Civ gets worse. And that window has long since closed for Vivi. And I think Gamer Legion know it. As long as they hold the other side, as long as they don't take any big losses here, they'll be okay. Look at Jordan. Snipes one trap, moves the Bomber Cannons. Fires for the next trap, he'll move the Bomber Cannons again. He did lose one, sadly. So good. Taking out the Trebs. Feels like Jordan can happily just patrol in here because these Ratan Archers are that good. And meanwhile, Tato and Doubt are going to dominate the other side. That says, like, Bomber Tower? That's a great idea. I think I'll make some of those things. Jeesh. I, like, the untouched trade is obviously a big concern here. But, I mean, Vivi's whole base is back here, right? Trade count for Yo is insane, though. 62 trade cards. <laughs> but he only has... He has 162 eco. He probably doesn't realize he has as many trade cards. He needs to delete Vils at this point. 100 vills plus 65 trade is insane. He doesn't have the pop space to make, make enough paladins. Now, I'm sure he's banking resources, and he might need to start spreading resources around. Whoops. Um, he's not actually banking resources yet, but he's going to start to. He's pretty maxed out on what he can do. You think they should have gone Koreans? I think going Frank's pocket was fine. But I think you either go, if you pick Koomans, you have them go pocket and play Paladin. Because that's their best unit for team games. Or, you don't pick Koomans at all, and you have Vietnamese on the other side. That's what everyone seems to be doing. And I, I can't see many arguments against it. They, they gave it their best shot to push Tato, but this just seems unstoppable. Yeah, they couldn't go Koreans, actually, because Koreans were banned. Guys, don't pay no attention to Eli. Every time I'm playing, he's like, play with Koreans. <laughs> and every time, I just realized it was you, dude. I feel like 50% of his messages are all like, Koreans. And now we've got Onager on the way. So that's what Vivi's thinking about. He's going to make the siege right behind here. But it feels like maybe this could have come a little faster. He arrives Yo with a massive ball of paladins. But look what's happening on the other side. We will have Onager for Doubt at the same time. So Doubt will probably be able to easily make Siege Onager. I'd like to see maybe a few forward... Oh, yeah, there. See? He's sending Vils. He's sending Vils to make a forward Siege Workshop. Okay, good fight, because it's a 2v1 engagement. Good work. Not bad. I mean, the Chukunu can still make it out of here, but now look on the other side. Yo, losing these villagers is actually good for him, so he can make Paladins. Doubt's got mo bo more Boyars, sorry. Chukunu are completely canceled out by the Rats and Archer ball. Jordan's Rats and Archers and uh, Bomber Cannons were the ticket. They were the key. Doubt has to be careful not to lose his villagers here. If they start to lose this position, it's a little, it's a little awkward, right? I think Tata's got enough castles and enough Chukunu where he'll be fine. It definitely feels like Lix is a couple seconds away from death, whereas Tato can regroup, get some support from Doubt. I will be casting the next semifinal. It looks as though we're going to be looking at who will make it to the final against Gamer Legion. Military count is higher for Gamer Legion. I think the military units they're making is better. And it's been looking that way for quite some time, unless Siege Onager comes in. You get Siege Onager in the mix, it's suddenly a different situation. They did have the trade last I checked. Uh, let me check again. Well, not Vivi, but holy crap, does Lix and Yo have trade. Holy crap. 80 trade cards for Yo. He's still making more of them. It's the same problem. He has 157 eco. <laughs> So I will say this, having so I played in a Black Forest game against Gamer Legion actually in the quarters before they played here. And I had the same problem because you look at your stats and it doesn't show it shows your Vils. So you're like, oh I have 80 Vils, I'm good. 
But you have to look down to the right on a separate toggle to see how many trade cards you have. So there's no easy way to just glance and see how many trade cards you have. And so I had 170 eco. Uh, granted, I was Koreans trying to go Siege Onager, so a little different, but... Yeah, this is, this is insane. These Paladins can't do anything. And now Siege Onager's here to make it even worse. Now Tato's back. Now Chinese can't get Siege Onager, but I don't really think that matters here. Dao can add the Siege Onagers, and he's doing that now. Jordan has 100 military, but also Tato has 100 military. And they have added the trade, too. They've got a really good ratio of vills. Tato's got 30 vills right now. And I don't even know if that's because he got raided or what. I think he's just like, well, I don't... He's got, like, no eco. <laughs> that's insane. All Chuko knew. The GG's called Gamer Legion. We'll go into the final of Return of the Clans. Honestly, I again, I went into this semi thinking it'd be 4-1 for Gamer Legion. White Wolf Palace did impress me. Um, I think Vivi in particular... He stood out as someone who played better than I was expecting from him today. Glad to see he's back in shape. But I don't know what the strategy talk was for White Wolf Palace. I don't know why it was played like this. I just heavily disagree. Think of what Game 7 would have been as well. So you look at the maps right there. It would have been a map I can't say. Huachina. Okay, I can't say that. So if that's the case, are Vietnamese a top-tier civilization on that map? A lot of you might not know the answer to that. I know the answer to that, and the answer is no. It's really not. It's not, it's not a sieve that you would want over Khmer or Japanese or other sieves that come to mind. So I look at Kumans again as flank and how poorly it performed, and I'm like, why? You know? Now, I did explain properly what they were trying to do. I do think it was very unfair on Vivi that his golds and his stones were forward the way it was and the fact that Tattoo had everything on the back. However... Atto seemed to expect it. They knew exactly what to do. The Slav choice was dominant from Doubt. And then the Vietnamese choice was super dominant from Jordan. It's sad that they're crashed out of the tournament and they never used Vietnamese on maps where, like this map in particular, where you start with the castle. It just seems like the easiest pick. Easiest pick is to go for Vietnamese. Easiest pick is to go for Chinese. And it was only a question of what you do with the pocket. So, GG, but I can say WWP without a doubt did not deserve to make it because I think of poor choices and also they don't think they played as well throughout the whole best of seven. It is a game after all. You do have to play it. Jordan with that crazy KD. KD isn't actually that bad for Vivi, I guess, but I mean, it's not great either, right? And then Yo, I think Yo twice in this series was over booming. Um, 80, ending the game on 80 or 90 trade cards is a little much. Obviously was very focused. Basically, the order that players will go with at that stage is add trade, add paladins, micro paladins. Add trade, add paladins, micro paladins. <laughs> and you don't address your vill count or anything until you realize that your pop's too high. Or you get raided and then you have to fix some stuff, right? They probably was just going through that cycle and didn't know. I don't think it would have made a difference, to be fair to Yo. I really think this side was just completely gutted and was always going to be regardless of him. But... You know, they are all on the same team. They've got to get the strats down, and that wasn't it. All right, so uh, real quick tidbit before we close this out. Thank you uh, to everyone on stream who obviously watched this. Everyone who might watch this in YouTube, we're going to have the second semi up to you within a day or two, and then, of course, the final. That means Gamer Legion's in the final. Um, the next semi is going to be between Aftermath and Suomi. Uh, no, not Suomi, sorry. A Deceptive Baguettes. And the Deceptive Baguettes are a team that I've been really excited about ever since the tournament started. They were in the same group as Gamer Legion. I uploaded some games from this tourney to YouTube because I thought they were so exciting. So, Aftermath's the heavy favorite there, I'd say. But lots to talk about, lots to look forward to. And uh, for those here on the stream, that will be coming up next.